Leo. So yeah, I wanted to just I wanted to start this pod by reminding you that Swolby in Spanish said, "Hey, you're worth nothing. Suck my dick." That is a great insult. Like you can't in the s- Edward Forty hands. In video. the Edward Forty hands. Is video. that oh, why yeah. Reddit? Is that why the feminists were so upset about this video? I, I believe that's why. It was because Swolby said that to a couple, a nice couple. You're worthless. You can suck my. <laughs> why does Swolby? My question is, if the if the guy's indeed worthless, why do you uh, want a blowjob from him? Exactly. Even it doesn't you like to get sense. blown by girls with a cute face. Absolutely. They could have extra 75 80 pounds on him but they 100%. need to have a cute little smile that would be great i mean it's obviously better with a cute smile but to be honest danny i you know I mean, we're having a sex therapist on later tonight uh, t- today on this episode guys you, you're probably excited about that but i'm gonna be honest i'll have sex with a girl even without an, a pretty face i'm about to drop a bombshell on you right now leo oh my god oh boy leo might not be happy about this but leo in spring of 2020 said after we filmed the giving him a head tattoo in Starbucks video that he would get his penis sucked by rat pussy Pam. Why would you bring that up again? You said you would get your penis sucked by that human grimace. Rat Stop pussy it. Pam. I personally think she's very beautiful. So you can call her a human grimace. The fu- from fucking McDonald's, <laughs> Leo. Pro- pull up Grimace. Pull you up could- Grimace on the fuck it. I want to look at Grimace because I need to get a full visual. Let's pull of this. it up, Austin, so the audience can get it too. But I mean, Grimace. That because Grimace is more top shaped, right? I feel like she might be more of a traditional sphere. I look. I think she's Latina. She's got some hips in there. Okay, I, I think she, you know she might be a little overweight. So is you know our boy R- Rattic Ralph. But she can get there. I believe in her. I know she's gonna. She's gonna get there. Personally, I believe she's going to get there, Danny. But you would have gotten blown by her before. She I would got have there. gotten. Oh, my God, dude. You're a fucking piece of shit, dude. The, Am I? You're <laughs> Dino <laughs> and Austin as my jury. Am I telling lies by <laughs> making that comparison? You're spitting facts, bro. <clears throat> fucking Grimace, yeah, dude. His hand. He can't even wipe his ass. Well, you, you might as well take out the middleman and just get your cock sucked by Grimace. <laughs> you need to go hang out at McDonald's more often. <laughs> What about dude, the Hamburglar? Fuck you, dude. You told me to get burglarized the semen out of your nutsack. <laughs> the Hamburglar, dude. Those are great characters that they came up with. The Hamburglar? He would just steal hamburgers. He had the fucking the, the, the mask. It's he not good, just, huh? It's, it's not good if your mascot encourages looting at your business. Yeah. It's really weird. That would be like if Louis Vuitton had this new guy who was like a black dude with a hooded sweatshirt and a gun. Mm. <laughs> like, what if that was their mascot? Dude, what what are the the worst mascots? Would you say? I mean, why were the the Indians? You know that why were the Cleveland Indians? That that wasn't a big deal. It was just a chief, and he looked really happy. He was just an Indian chief with yeah. the biggest smile, yeah. nice teeth. Yeah, it's it's clearly out of the depths of the 1920s. I mean, that looks like uh, one of the engines in Peter Pan. It's drawn with less with less compassion than the engines in Peter Pan. Dude. And they are like, I mean, they get into bushes and stuff and use them as disguises. It's pretty stereotypical. Yeah. I feel like you would have read the original Peter Pan book. Have you? It's considered some kind of literary classic. I don't know anything about Peter Pan's book. It's, it, it was, uh, I mean, it's based, he would take children to heaven and it's really like, kind of crazy. And like he did, I think he bangs fucking Tiger I, Lily. I think he's a pedophile, dude. No, he's not. If hey, he, Peter Pan? If he lives forever, but he's, he's a always kid. a kid. Technically, he's like a hundred years old, and he's just hanging around little kids. Is all there day. any evidence he has sex with them though? He doesn't fuck the Lost Boys, dude. What are you saying, Peter? Peter Pan fucks the Lost the Lost Boys. Fuck you, dude. I'm just saying it's a little weird for a guy honestly, that old. To both be of you out guys are boys. they're basically Lost Boys. Look at them. Like honestly, you guys should be living in a treehouse somewhere without parents. Absolutely. If we did a Peter Pan thing, you would be yeah. the Lost Boys. I'd have to and be Father Captain O'Neill Hulk. would be Smee. <laughs> Leo's got to be Captain Hook. <laughs> I'd be Captain Hook and O'Neill is Smee, and I'd beat the shit out of him. You already time. sexually assaulted him That's in what a I th- video. I'm pretty sure Captain Hook sexually assaults Smee. I think it's like his little fuck toy. I think so, too. Smee. Yeah, we yeah. used it. Um, when I lived in San Francisco, the fat guy that had a blowjob slave that would come over and just drain him and then spend her own money on the yeah. Uber there and the mm-hmm. Uber back. That guy, I called him Smee. That was his alias <laughs> for my newsletter because he was just this big fat guy who would wear a beanie. Uh, and he's, I mean, it's basically the same thing. If you're fat and you wear a beanie, you're Smee. Oh my God. So if you true. wear a striped shirt, 
Your bonus SME. Pull up SME right now. But uh, there's going to be. A, I don't even know how to smell a spell SME. But um, yeah, I, I kind of want to. I almost. If the good doctor is watching this so far, <laughs> I apologize, good doctor. Your your episode's still going to be the classiest one. You know, this is just how we start sometimes. A little and rowdy. I wanted her to know today mm-hmm. that I am a down to earth guy, and that's mm-hmm. why I wore this outfit. Oh, really? Nice. So you wore. It's a combination of a few things. That's it. You're wearing a leather jacket. With a, a, a Russian, basically, a hat that it's like a raccoon hat. I don't yeah. even know what to call it. Yeah, yeah. I'm Davy yeah. Crockett of the Eastern Bloc. Right. And then these glasses, it's very, uh, you know, I don't know, like 70s, 60s rock star kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. She's going to feel that kind of energy. Okay. She's probably going to say, it, she's not going to even flinch. The, I think Dr. Kate Balistieri, I think that's how you say it. She doesn't. She won't even flinch. See, Smee's fucking definitely gay, dude. I, I, I can't. I can't hear you right now. I'm taking this off until the good doctor shows up. Okay. Smee is definitely gay. That's an unflattering pose. It does look a lot like O'Neill, though. I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's very <laughs> similar shape. It's if they have the same diet, that's for sure. Hmm. I wonder if Father O'Neill eats. We were just talking about before this went on. That he fa- told me. What does he eat? Processed like macaroni and cheese, like the very American frozen food, macaroni and cheese, like stuff like that. Father O'Neill is the guy who got uh, assaulted by Tommy Trauma in the Fattest Town in America video. Mm-hmm. We were talking about how he has to have a better Instagram handle. Yeah, O'Neill drone photography. Mm-hmm. He's got to get rid of that. I mean, he's on the path to stardom, the oh. fast track, you could say. He was live streaming with you guys. Yep. Yeah, for like. Eight hours yesterday. Well, that's the fast track to obscurity, actually. But you and I, <laughs> we put him in a video. We put him in a video. We we put him on the pod. Yeah, look, I think like the route of going the live stream route with the, with these two, it's it's look, it's a lot of fun. You might even get some pussy out of it, you know, by shouting out the Leo and Danny show and stuff. But you also do tend to lose your mind. There's the cigar guy situation. There's King Croc. Mm. You do a little too li- too much live streaming with those two. Mm. For some reason, mm. your wits leave you. Mm. Absolutely. Because in live streams, it's not a curated version of yourself. Mm-hmm. You say things, you show things, a credit card number, mm-hmm. a message you sent on Instagram. Maybe you flash your phone and you've got something pulled up in the Instagram Discover that's a little incriminating. That's Booties, titties. Your girlfriend sees that, relationship's over. That's a casualty of live streaming. But I just want to say now, I don't know how you guys get away with live streaming on any mainstream platform. Because I know Dino lets slip about seven racial epithets every single time they do it. And about nine anti-gay slurs. Exactly. A lot more than and, that. And, and, I, and I continue to feel like we're failing them. Because if they don't know anything, I like, yes, we do make a gay joke on occasion. But it's got to be funny. It can't just be blatantly saying someone's gay. And that's about as that's what Dino does. He just looks at someone and he goes gay. (laughs) That is not you have to be more creative than that. Dino, you cannot just do that. Yeah, he's like a he's like a baby character in a children's book. Did you ever read that series of unfortunate events? Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, there's a baby in there that just goes like (laughs) goo goo gaga. Sam. Mummy, mm-hmm. it's like a mummy's coming after him. Mm-hmm. Goo goo gaga clue. Mm-hmm. They just use it to like move the story along, point out a clue, point out a bad. Goo goo gaga gay. Goo goo gaga <laughs> based. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much Dino's That's function Dino. on any live stream, I would imagine. Hey, I if did. You... I did figure out Dino is iron cold behind the camera. He will just stick it in someone's face if they don't want the camera in their face, and it's glorious. So there was a confrontation. That means. Tell me what happened. It wasn't really a confrontation. Uh, We were at this bar for a while. We had this table for like a long time. Is it nighttime or daytime? Nighttime. And like they did one live stream and look who they think they are, dude. Like, look at look at Dino's dress today. Can we get the cameras on you guys? Like, what the fuck is going on with Dino's like attire today? What is this? He knows a woman's gonna be in here. We were wearing we were wearing blazers. We were all dressed. Father O'Neill had a vest on. And uh, me and Swoby both had blazers on. Dino was dressed yeah. up. Uh, Swoby was wearing the same tuxedo that uh, he took off his little sister's Ken doll. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Swoby. There he is. What's speaking up, of the speaking of the devil. Go ahead and hit the uh, Swoby. Hit the mic on the stand. We were going to have you put your penis in that <laughs> Hoover there. Are you good what? with that? Yeah. Is that cool? <laughs> Yeah, that's how it goes, dude. Yeah, we all did it already. It's dude. called escalation. You mm-hmm. came in here, you got a wedding ring on your penis last time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's time to get some suction, buddy. <laughs> what is that watch you're wearing? You know what time it is. Why are you wearing two watches? Dude, what are happened? Those, are those both mine? Those look like mine. Can you come here? They're not yours. Come I'm... here. 
Walk toward are me. You a little, are you a little? Walk are you, toward me. My are you, N words. Stop walk it. Are you, a, me. Are, you a, are you a little Latino thief? This one is not mine. Let me see this one. Neither of these are mine. They both look like mine, which yeah. is that's not a good statement about my watch collection. Yeah, why don't you know and, it? The work on my timepiece is if they look anything like Swolby's. You have but your sadly they do. friend come over, and the first thing you do is just accuse him of yeah. stealing your that was stuff. One of, that was an early cancellation I remember from like, uh, I was in high school, and some guy on a on a broadcast this, man. <laughs> on a broadcast said, uh, oh, you know, Juan's in here, Ablando. He goes, Ablando, that Espanol, and my wallet's missing. And he was fired the next day. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's all he said. It's tough out there, man. I would never steal from the sex criminal. Thank you. I appreciate that, Swolby. Ever. Everything's getting politicized, dude. On the end zone of one of these playoff games this weekend, it said advanced social justice. Just huge. Just right there on the, in the end what? zone. Come on. And we were in Green Bay this weekend. Yeah, I was in Green Bay with though. Nico for the Packers versus 49ers games. And an alarming amount of the Packers fans, big, fat, Midwesterners, that's at least how you picture them, were transgendered. Come on. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, mean, I realized I had an argument that I only had one bullet point, racial justice, social yeah. justice in the back of the end zone, and I needed at least one more. So I lied. I fibbed. Hey, with All right, I apologize. Now, it was surprisingly believable. Yeah. But I, fucking Green Bay, dude. What is that place like? Green Bay? It is. So here's how it happened. When the NFL came about, it must have been in the 19, I don't know, 10s, 20s, 30s, somewhere back then. That's when the team started picking up steam, started forming, popping up all around the country. Back then, I think Green Bay was just as promising a city as Los Angeles. Not New York or Chicago. Those were already established. But San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Green Bay were neck and neck. All right? They were horses, and people were like, I don't know which one to put my money on. I think we establish one franchise just to be safe over there in Green Bay. And San Francisco rose to prominence as a tech, banking, homosexuality center. <laughs> Los Angeles rose to prominence for movies and for illegal immigration. Thanks a lot, Swolby. <laughs> Cheap labor. Yeah, and Green stuff. Bay, however, just turned into a place with like a couple fat guys in a potato farm. Uh, do they still make the cheese there? I don't know. All I saw, so it looks about the same size as maybe Redlands really? in Lanigi City. It's tiny. Yeah, it's got a little downtown area, and then there are just like smokestacks and houses that look like they were built in 1899. Let me ask you a question. You, you kind of gauge the people there. Could Aaron Rodgers walk into a bar naked with a full, full boner? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just walk in naked to mm -hmm. a bar full boner and go, hey, you suck my dick mm. and, and the girl would and not only that he'd it'd be celebrated well it wouldn't be a girl leo because wow. i can honestly say i saw two or three girls under the age of 30 really it was an astonishingly older heavier Fact. crowd as far as women and men so it's just an unhealthy american city yes the only two cute girls we saw were working in dick sporting goods mm. Holy and shit. i think it yeah it's safe to i mean if they're working in a sporting goods store they definitely know who aaron Rodgers is yeah, he could have walked in with the boner and he mm. could have gotten it sucked nice There's and, no maybe, and, and maybe he would have uh maybe he would have like done a funny joke with a little gun that rings up barcodes like yeah ding <laughs> Looks to me like nine inches, but you better give it a second. <laughs> and then they would suck his cock right there. And then he would be like, um, um, I don't know what else he would do. He would probably make some other. Maybe he would just like shoot the little infrared beam on her forehead. And maybe he'd be like, uh, I'm marking. I'm making a little X for where I'm going to shoot my jizz. Huh? Oh, my God. Because he's so bored. He's got to mix it up. You know? Aaron Rodgers, I think before. Robbie Gold went out there and kicked the game-winning field goal. Mm. Aaron Rodgers was already on a private jet to Malibu. Ah, for sure. <laughs> that guy probably Doesn't every. I think Monday is like your off day in the NFL. I'm pretty sure he like gets on the. Um, Fly somewhere. What's the, what was that old fast jet? The Concorde. The Concorde. He yeah. Get, he, I think there's like one. Miles an hour. I think one Concorde is still in existence, and mm. it's in Aaron Rodgers' private. <laughs> runway in green bay he flies to malibu every monday and mm. comes back tuesday at noon to resume training for I, sure but i wouldn't doubt it i think he's gonna take rapist burger's spot in pittsburgh 
He might, dude. He's gonna well. He's gonna play again. I mean, he's. You don't think he'll retire? How old is he? I don't think he's gonna retire. He's too good. And he's too young. He's too young. He's like forty though. Isn't no, he thirty eight? Thirty seven. Thirty eight. He might be thirty eight. That's old now. for a football player. I mean, isn't that old for a quarterback? I mean, he just might have two back to back MVP seasons. It's hard mm-hmm. to say he's aging. Mm-hmm. He's aging, but it's hard to say he's aging. Mm-hmm. And his his women are definitely not aging. No, he keeps them nice and young. Yeah, mm-hmm. Shailene Woodley. She is young. Pull her up though. I mean, I don't know how I feel about Shailene Woodley. I will not say a bad word about she, Aaron Rodgers. I, I'm not going to say a bad word about a, a Aaron Rodgers, but Shailene, she's very, you she's know, she's definitely not she's black. Hippie. She's very white. She's too white. There she is. Uh, she's very, she's from Simi Valley. She grew up basically 30 minutes from me. Simi Valley is known to be a little white trashy. Yeah, I need a, I need a little color in my women. So Shailene. I, I don't, uh, Shailene Woodley. I don't prefer her. I, I Great actress. I need, uh, I need, uh, she's hot. She's beautiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I just need a little bit of color. You know, he, he likes some white though, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's, He's he's canceled Aaron Rodgers. That's color, what the video is about. Does color in, include Asian to you? That that is color. Right? I need a little splash. How many shades does it take for Danny Mullen? Mm, I think about twenty five percent shadiness. Mm. Nice. So we'll be, we're going to have a nice, well to do doctor on the pod today. So I want you on your on your best behavior. I don't want you doing none of your stupid gangster shit. You understand me? Can't make any promises. You probably should take off those sunglasses. In Can't fact, make too. any promises. I don't even know. want you wearing the L A hat. I want you being like Swolby that's like, you know, working maybe, I don't know, maybe you're at the gym and you're trying to get some new clients. You don't want them to find out about the, the you know, your antics on the Danny Mullen yeah. channel. Yeah. You want to hide that. Can I hit on her? No. No, you can't. <laughs> but that would be really funny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, do you really, I mean, who are you kidding, Leo? Uh-huh. Obviously, we the second this girl him. walks, we're just yeah. going to be like, okay, this guy has sex with hookers right. constantly. Right, right, right. You should have seen what he did in Vegas. There's right. a video of him just leveling a chick. It's he never up. wears condoms. Mm-hmm. He that. always resorts to plan B. Yeah. Right. His, his ex-girlfriend was an OnlyFans girl. Right. What advice do you have? Right. <laughs> I know, and, and I was even going to say that maybe me and you should add something, an ailment that Swolby has to talk to the good doctor about. Maybe he has an addiction mm-hmm. to certain things that yeah. maybe we could add. Mm-hmm. Do you have any ideas? Yeah, I think so. I think he loves to be dressed up like a baby. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> and and with a rattler. Mm-hmm, with yeah. A rattle. Mm, a, a rattle. rattle a rattler. Yeah, and a rattle. I wear huggies. And he likes to um, pose for fake diaper ads in his backyard. <laughs> oh, I like that. Or what about like he, he gets he likes the, the woman to bathe him in milk. In baby attire, like in a, in, a, in a tub. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. He likes to be bathed in milk, and she loads it up into a super soaker beforehand. Right, and she pretends it's coming out of her tit. We got to focus, and not laugh when we tell her this, because the, we got to be serious. The taller the girl, the better for Swolby. Yeah, he's got a tall girl fetish. So he likes giant girls to bathe them in milk Amazon. in tubs. <laughs> just giant women. That's good. Or we can just tell him the truth. We yeah, tell her he's pretty truth. fucked up. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a mess sexually. Okay. And we're gonna have uh, Swole, uh, we're not Swole, but we're gonna have Brooks on here too to get help from the the you know the uh, the good doctor. Although I need a lot of help from her too, but you know I got help last time. It didn't do much. Yeah, I'm curious to hear about your sexual issues. Yeah. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. But I just gotta hear a little bit more about your guys' stream. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is wild. We like listen. We like when you guys go out and do your own shit. So you know, congrats first of all. Okay, so well, all three we were, of them were wearing shades. I just put that I know, together. I know, we all got it. these. <laughs> yeah, two. Like everybody has the supreme confidence now from doing their live stream, which is great. It must have something good must have happened, dude. It was a hit. I mean, originally we were gonna have a limousine and try to pick up chicks, but then Garrett. <laughs> then got you realize it cost money. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, uh. Casey was actually gonna like hook it up for us, but we decided until Who's Garrett. Casey again? Content Casey God. the content god. Oh. He's probably a full blown cocaine addict. Actually, he was pretty tolerable the last time I saw him. He's epic. He's he was pretty good the last time I saw him. He was fine. I but, think he was on a lot of coke the second to last time. That's when my impression of him wasn't so high. But gotcha. He's won. He's won me over. All right. Though we did have that one little confrontation, and that was like. So stupid. These just purple haired, like feminist looking chicks sit down next to us in like a massive booth, just the two of them, while we're like in this squad. And Swoby just leans over and oh, says, Oh no. No, he literally just says, Oh no. Hey, your hair is epic. Because it was like dark purple. Yeah. And wow. she just Complimenting her lost it, dude. Like, well, she first, lost it? At first, she didn't respond. She just pretended he didn't, she didn't hear him. So then he goes, Hey, I said your hair is epic. And she's like, 
we did not consent to have a conversation with you. That didn't so, happen. Something we like not, that. Yeah, and like, then she goes and complains to the owners and they kick us out of the restaurant and say that they had already complained about us twice, even though they were there for like five minutes. Wait, wait. How close to the truth is that sentence? Yeah. I pretty, did not consent to having a conversation with you. Pretty spot on. She literally said that. And that you know, just threw us off. Swoley. She said, the, the, I'm going to get security. And then I, me and Austin looked at each other. At that point, we didn't give a fuck. So we were like... Go, go get security. If, if you guys keep hanging like, out, stop you get filming used to this. me. And Dino's just like putting the camera in her face. I don't know. I, don't you think mad. Swolby might have said something else? And no, they're, no. They're, the, literally, know. the only thing we said to her before she flipped out was, "Your hair looks epic." I just, I'm gonna say this, Leo. I'm gonna take a probably unpredictable stance on this issue. Okay. But if I were a woman. And these three came up to me and said <laughs> anything. Well, you call, call security. Anything I would call security. <laughs> I like it. You guys got to get used to those sorts of responses because they're going to be 90% of the responses you get. I know, but we had a pastor with us. We had a Jew. We had Who's Dino, the Jewish guy? Uh, Aaron the Jew, my Dude, friend. you would love his friend Aaron the Jew. He's, He's awesome. He's so funny. Is he down for a double penetration? Uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, why does he call himself Aaron the Jew? I gave him that name. Not creative bad. not yeah. bad I like we're it. gonna keep you around yeah <laughs> and make but, you one of the writers on our staff and then like kind of like neeks when he gets a little hammered he turns into the quintessentialist but that's a little that's we what just, does that mean the quintessentialist is unpack this, is that this, for is, me is that his nickname when he gets hammered he, he'll he like say some shit he'll be like yeah i think uh that uh, the bible is blah 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 and i think jews are quintessential or something like that i'm like what and then I just that was gave the him. worst explanation of why he's I, called I, that. I, this is the worst example. I know, I know. But he said quintessential in a sentence, and then I caught that, and I, was, I just started naming him the quintessential. I, I feel like he's got to say something a couple of times to be called like the quint. I get that. I hate it when people lock into one word, and it's all they'll say over and over and over. Yeah. And it, 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 I get it. I understand the frustration, especially a word that's borderline pretentious, like quintessential. Dude, it's but unreal. one time, one time, you got to give them a pass. Unreal. I remember the one time in a Beatles history class in college, this twat in front of me used the word juxtaposition like five times in one class. That's fucked up. And I was like, is she, is she doing this just to just to f with me? I can't even use it in one sentence. It was her word of the day on her vocab. Dude, she's yeah. like, she kept raising her hand. Like the one thing I love about the White Album is like it's this juxtaposition position between like simple pop songs like I will and experiments like revolution and it just there's also this juxtaposition between guitar and there's going to be this juxtaposition between the bullet in my brain when Danny Mullen enacts his fantasy oh because my I want to I don't know why I'm... All I can do is resort to violence right now. I've been in Green Bay for three days. I drove through a blizzard this morning with Nico. Jesus. Nico hung over out of his noggin, mm. trying to make our flight, which we made by about five minutes. Wow. I'm stressed out. I barely slept last night, so I'm just feeling... I heard Nico got hammered. Nico... Dude. Okay, here, I'm just going to give you a snapshot of my night last night. Oh. Nico is in his underwear, climbing up a rain gutter... So that he can use a decorative balcony like a jungle gym. What? That's how blacked out this kid was. I'm so upset I wasn't there. Cheers to 2022 and to resolutions you can actually keep. Yes. How about having clean and shiny balls all year round, Leo? Ah, dude, that is a dream of mine. You know, I'm a hairy man. I, I, want, I need my balls trimmed. It's a common complaint girls have. Yes. They tell me. They DM me. Yeah, I, your friend Leo's cute. You know, I sucked his dick, mm -hmm. but his nutsack looked like an unkempt Wolverine. Yeah, as you get older, you need a little bit more stimulation in the nutsack area, and it's got to be clean. You don't follow your own advice. I don't. Nice. We have a hypocrite on the podcast. <laughs> but I need, I need, I need the, you know, a manscaped. Our oh. sponsor, luckily for you, Leo, uh -huh. is Manscaped. Hell yeah. And they're here to save your balls this year mm -hmm. and make the ball drop into 2022 the cleanest and sexiest ever. So set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join the 4 million men worldwide. Brooks. Damn. 4, 4 million. million. You're at this. 4 million is almost 6 million. And that's a sensitive number to you. When you think when they have. <laughs> and it was really. Million, and it was 11 million overall, but six. I actually know. used code LDS and got my own set. I, Hell you yes. should have waited until it was 6 million. Then you should have been like, all right, I can get behind this. I couldn't wait any longer. That ball sack needs. <laughs> Absolutely. And Brooks, Brooks has a lot of sex, so that's saying something. Oh, yeah. Guys, 
right now you can join those four million men you can push us closer to our goal of six million with our exclusive offer on manscape.com if you use our code 20 l d s that's two zero l is in larry d is in dick s is in sucking you get 20 percent <laughs> off and free shipping on what leo on the performance package 4.0 yeah, i've heard good things i mean you have one the performance package yeah absolutely how's it working on your nutsack it's a you large nutsack. It's a large nutsack. It's a big nutsack. It is. It's like trying to use a push mower across the state of Montana. Yeah, Do, man. How do you, it, does I it take want, a while? It, yeah, but mm. I'm having fun because I'm doing it with Manscaped. And that 4.0 lawnmower, Leo, it has a 4,000K LED... 4,000K? Mm -hmm. It has it has 4,000, then a K mm -hmm. LED spotlight technology. What? So that it, it shines a light. It's we great, live in actually. L.A. There are ghetto birds flying over my neighborhood, shining spotlights on perps all the time. It's like that in my bedroom every night, except the perps are pesky hair follicles. Wow. And occasionally flakes of shit colored, shit yeah. covered toilet paper. Well, with a 400K LED, I mean, that you can use that as a flashlight with those rolling blackouts they have in L.A. You know, they're just black and, you know, they're just... <laughs> The lights go out sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You, you can know? use what we're saying is you can use your manscaped 4.0 lawnmower as a generator. Yeah, easily. And if you have a small family, if your daughter, ah, oh, daddy, I need to do my homework. You just <laughs> she got it. And you can just you can shave your nuts while she's working on her arithmetic. Isn't that great? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's, that, if that's not two birds with one stone, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Daddy, daddy, your pubic hair is in my isosceles triangle. Shut up, Cindy. <laughs> I got to look fresh for your mother. And you know what? Keeping a mom happy, that's how you keep a, mom, a fucking home happy. Absolutely. Screw the kids. Screw the kids. Neglect them. Yep. But with a shaved nutsack, your wife will be pleasure. When you're plowing her from behind, yep. she feels that nutsack. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's hairy, it's, it's like sandpaper. Mm -hmm. When it's smooth because of your lawnmower, your performance package, it's much better. Absolutely. Happy wife. That's the key. John Wooden said the key to having uh, to being a good father is to love the, the the mother of the children. Oh wow! I think he said it a lot more beautifully than I just said it. Guys, we also have the crop preserver and the crop reviver, which are designed to uh, take care of the the very private, very stinky parts of your uh, undercarriage. Mm. Leo, I know you've really been getting into anal play, so this is something <laughs> for you to consider. Yeah. You're single now. I mean, the uh, the intense orgasm that you get with a nice finger right up the ass. It's uh, it can be it gets so much more accessible yes. when there's no hair, Danny. Yes. And thanks to the Lawn Mower mm -hmm. 4.0 performance package, yeah, I can make that happen. Listen, Leo went over to the Denny's off La Cienega at yeah, noon last on a Sunday. Yeah. Tons of Hispanic families having post church brunch. Mm -hmm. Leo runs up to the window with a ski mask on, <laughs> drops his pants, spreads his ass cheeks, right. and puts his asshole right up against the glass. I do that at least. I would say bi monthly, two times a month at least. I do that. It's it's freeing. You guys should try it. And he only does it because he has the confidence given to him by the lawnmower 4.0 and the crop preserver and the crop reviver. Yeah, if I was uh you know a, a gay porn star per se i'd be ready to go and oh. i know that i'm ready to go because there's many denny's that know that it's fresh yeah my asshole's fresh you're right just, now. he's banking that there's going to be a gay porn producer mm -hmm. seated in one of the booths yeah. to complete the set manscape threw in their shed travel bag with anti-chafing boxer briefs and a free gift to keep all your goodies stored comfortably wow. a free gift no spoiler alert it's ivermectin <laughs> it's it's great it, it stores it's there's not going to be any worms in we'll your uh, in your shed travel bag in conclusion guys if you want confidence with the opposite sex you got to be confident about how your package looks and right. the way to achieve that leo mm -hmm. they gotta go to manscape.com don't you're right absolutely and even if you're not having sex with women and you're just masturbating if you're putting a butt plug right up your ass with a lot of hair it, you're going to need so much lube you're going to yeah. go broke with the yeah. amount of lube that you're going to use yeah. because lube's expensive Thanks, everyone knows Biden. that yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Biden. Dude, lube is so goddamn expensive. So come on, clean it up. Get over to manscaped.com. Use code 20LDS. That's 20LDS to get 20% off your performance package. Performance package 4.0. Manscaped. And also free shipping. Free shipping, too. Wow.
<laughs> I was at an Indian wedding though, Danny, and I'm going to tell you right now that there is no one that does it like an Indian wedding. I mean, I'm going to tell you what they do to open the wedding. And imagine your Wait, family. Isn't, only, isn't he Middle East? He's Pakistani. He's Pakistani. Same thing as in. They're exactly basically Indian. I thought they, they were, were mortal India. enemies. They were India to 1964. But they're and enemies. They became, well, but they were India until 1964, and then they just branched off. His wife is Indian? No, his wife is Mexican. So they had a, a combo wedding. But they Wait, had, so they, a Pakistani and a Mexican at an Indian wedding. Well, they had a Pakistani wedding that is like an Indian <laughs> wedding. Me and my Chinese girlfriend are going to have a Kenyan birthday party. I <laughs> bet. Is that all right? Yeah, do it. <laughs> I don't get this. Uh, you should, it's a Pakistani wedding, but it's the same as out. an Indian wedding. You should have walked the fuck like, out this is when bullshit. you realized the racial math didn't add up. This is how they start the wedding. I'm not fucking with you. It's it's we, it's we like a Danny Mullen video almost. <laughs> they do. They have the entire family from the grandmother, the aunts, the entire fucking family come in dancing with like, for the, like the groom. Ali, his entire family comes in dancing for 30 minutes with drums. Everyone has to dance. They put everybody in the circle, out of the circle. They pick people up, just straight dancing for 30 minutes. That's how they open the wedding. And then she comes out and they do the same thing with her whole family. Just and, and everybody's doing like Indian dancing, you know, like really like intense Indian dancing. That sounds like it sucks. It's, uh, it was amazing. Because nobody knows how to dance. <laughs> well, exactly. It was classic. Do you know, like, yes, it was. Was everybody drunk? Yes. Yeah, they well, play any okay. Tupac? No, they, they would do like remixes of regular pop songs with an Indian twist. Yeah, Ooh. so it just everything had a sitar. Yeah, a little sitar. Yeah, <laughs> and so it's like you know, uh, "Oops, I Did It Again" or "Baby One More Time" by yeah. Bernie. Instead of like, dun, 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 yeah, it yeah. was ding, 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 ding. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's no. probably some big copyright issues coming up with that wedding. <laughs> oh yeah, they they have, of trouble. course the DJ is is an Indian, you know, and he got you. You, I would love to see Swole be DJing an Indian wedding. That would be incredible. Change my name to Sitar Guy, dude. Sitar guy, <laughs> <laughs> fucking a, dude. So what happened? So you, you know what around. you know you know what oh, I you mean, wanna, right? You want me to tell you what it would happen? I okay, no, I I I had I danced with a lot of girls, but there were no blowjobs. I'd uh, be honest that there were. I what about makeouts? Uh, no makeouts either. What I about was groping. I was about. Uh, I, I think I my reputation preceded me at this wedding. There was a lot of girls that were like, I know who you are. <laughs> you know, and, and they like, read yeah. the Sun article. They might have read, dude. They read the Sun article, all right. Oh, they know. How would they know about you? What do you mean? It's easy. They go, they fucking Google me, and then all of a sudden, first thing that comes on is you and me on a couch, and me listening to you to rant like a son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. I say we play that for the good doctor, so that she knows oh, we who could, we are. We could, but the problem is the video might get struck. Yeah, we, we let's not play. Let's not play. But I'm just wondering, else. Leo. I mean, if you, if a girl's like, uh huh, I know who you are, and she smiles and laughs, mm -hmm. I think that is the green light to do some scummy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you. How you doing, baby? Yeah, you're right. Probably. There's interest there. Was was the Sun article like a blessing in disguise because it could be used as a cover for when they Google your yes. name? Yes, I I think that. But Danny, one? of course, was an asshole and pointed out that all you that most people are going to click the news, which I think is bullshit. I think they go to the first page of Google and that's it. I don't think I've ever seen news tab. The Sun article is. The main news source that covered the fat girl cancellation. Yes. My rant. But the best thing about it is I am <laughs> so minimalized and it's yeah. all about Dottavio because Dottavio so has a way higher mainstream persona. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like Leo Dottavio canceled for vile rent. Leo Dottavio was sitting and laughing mm -hmm. and smiling as, as somebody else said something about yeah, fat yeah, girls. Exactly. But Leo Dottavio sneered and joined yeah. in. Yeah. It's yeah. so like obvious. It was pretty funny, dude. Ed, I love fuck it. you, dude. Oh, God. That was a cancellation that was pretty funny. Let's be honest. That was a great cancellation. Uh, it was, it's a great one. It mm -hmm. was classic. Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, that's going to be always the quintessential cancellation. You like yeah. that, Swolby? Yeah. It is. No matter what comes, and God knows, many storms will continue to come. The mm -hmm. fat girl cancellation is always going to be the funniest. <laughs> you like yeah. that, Swolby? Yeah. Yeah, it, I so feel you like were, you stood by us during the fat girl cancellation, right? Yeah, of dude. course. Fuck yeah, so Swolby was on the front line. He lost. He lost his girlfriend over it. Swolby would be would go into bed. He'd match march blindly into battle with you anytime. Mm -hmm. I know he would, and us. But honestly, mm -hmm. he'd go. He'd go with both of us, and we would be like, all right, go in there and, and search something out. If Swolby gets shot, you know, Swolby gets shot. It was mm -hmm. for the regime. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was but in the trenches at the. I time. was watching Saving Private Ryan, and there was definitely some times where he would just yeah. be like, "Hey, uh, Johnson, uh, Federico." Go out there and check if anything's... It's like, yeah. dude, what? Yeah. Uh, what if I die, dude? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they would do it. Swolby 1 Kenobi. It's 1944. <laughs> okay. 
we're on Omaha Beach. There are twin MG42s mounted in a gigantic metal German bunker. And oh, I need God. you to plant some Bangalore torpedoes underneath a barbed wire dune. Yeah. Are you going to go in and do it for me, Swoby? Uh, I'd pop a UAV first and then do it. What's a UAV? Is that a penis pill? It just shows all the enemies in the area. That's some sort of Call of Duty thing, isn't it? I, I would, yeah. God the thing damn is, it. you would, uh, <laughs> of everybody in the crew, you would be the best person to go plant a Bangalore torpedo. 100%. You would absolutely be the smallest profile target. Dino is a contender. Because Dino, it would just be impossible to shoot him. He's too thin. Yeah. yeah. You, could really him, you could melt a barrel and yeah. all your rounds would miss. <laughs> Maybe graze the flesh on his bicep. Yeah. That's about it. And that would send him home because he would be bedridden for months just based on that little graze. He'd be done. Mm -hmm. I think probably just the, um, I don't know, first five or so steps up the beach would wipe him out. <laughs> just collapse. Oh, I saw Austin in Oklahoma, dude. O Austin could not handle the heat or the exertion. Was that? The, I don't the, know what I, I think That was, was weed withdrawals, buddy. And that, that was, was, that was, was Omaha Beach, dude. <laughs> yeah. That was a World War II reenactment. Danny got to witness my weed withdrawals firsthand. They were real. Good thing they lasted to the very, very last bit. We had to film one more thing that took us like five minutes, and that's when he damn nigh collapsed. Wow. But he was, dude, he was not having it. Granted, it was 100 degrees out, high humidity. We were inhaling smoke grenades. I think that was really what it fumes. was. The Oof. smoke grenades were everywhere, and you were just inhaling this, like, poison, essentially. Yeah, it wasn't this. People think my heroics on Omaha Beach this last June were nothing. They were something. That shit. You've done so many. Too. I was thinking about it, man. You, over the years now with on your channel, you've done a lot of crazy ass things. Yeah. I mean, you went in the tar pits, dude. I would have never done that. That video ever since that whatever Fox series started, like the La Brea, it's probably already canceled. But since that started, that video has gotten a bunch more views. Really? Well, yeah, yeah. people are like, why the fuck would he go in there? I hopped on that trend, baby. Let's go. Hopped on that trend. Ah, yeah. It's, it's been a, just a blur of shit. Basically, yeah, dude, what the fuck? every week, or at least like three or two times a month, we really push the boundaries and do some wild stuff. Yeah. Like, you're going to see me in this canceled Aaron Rodgers video. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I'm up on the stage. So, Green Bay was just a party. I mean, it was like Coachella. It felt like a festival atmosphere. Everybody's hammered, tailgates as far as the eye can see. Two separate stages with bands playing. I, wearing the shoulder pads, the Rapisburg shoulder pads, a Rodgers jersey, a Green Bay helmet with a Trump sticker fucking strapped across it. Oh, shit. Like an ivermectin <laughs> patch. I hop up on fucking stage with one of these bands, like jump the barricade and start rocking out with the band Come on. as Aaron Rodgers. I went into the health clinic that dropped Aaron Rodgers. They released him. They stopped sponsoring him because he wouldn't get vaccinated. I walked into that place in the full Rodgers costume, ripped off my helmet, and started rubbing ivermectin all over my face <laughs> when like a bunch of doctors came out horrified. That could have saved Dino if he got COVID, dude. You wasted the ivermectin. That's <laughs> wasted unbelievable. The ivermectin, dude. dude, come on. It's so cheap, though. Did you buy some? How much was dude, it? I just got it off Amazon. That's crazy. I just got it Damn. as a prop. I mean, they dude, might shut the, They might fuck our pod just because well, we said that. I just, I mean, I didn't get it as fucking a COVID cure. I got it for a comedy bit mm. to mock Aaron Rodgers. But mm. secretly, I think Aaron Rodgers is the fucking man. Not secretly. But, uh, also, I uh, you know Aaron Rodgers does uh, he he did the belt run against the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. He pump faked a couple times, then ran the ball himself to the corner of the end zone, held it out straight just to break the plane, Leo, just to break the plane, mm -hmm. make the touchdown good. Then he ran right over to the fans and started doing the belt. I'm Sick. the king belt and talking shit. I own you. I fucking own you. All my life, I own you. So I did a bunch of takes on that bit. I yeah, ran yeah. into. Uh, I ran into uh, what's what's the buffet, the Golden Corral, and I just I just charged in there. I was doing pump fakes, ran up to the mashed potatoes, just slammed my ball into the mashed potatoes. Oh went, my god! Well, like a family was trying to make their dinner plates, <laughs> no. just spiked the ball onto the ground. I fucking own this Golden Corral. I oh ran into god. a I ran Epic. into a bathroom while a guy was taking a shit. Swiped the ball underneath the stall so we could see the ball. Spiked it and started screaming, then got on my hands and knees, crawled into the stall, looked up and started talking shit to his face under the stall. As Aaron Rodgers. As he was taking a shit. What did the guy do? <laughs> was, I don't think he was happy. He was just, <laughs> he, he didn't respond? Or it he happened just, quick. Did he kind of move his feet? Yeah, he just looked, I mean, it was dark. It was like a dark bathroom. 
It'd be pretty fucked up. What would you do if somebody did that while you were taking a shit? That'd that's be the, honestly the worst thing ever. I'd, it was pretty that's, nice. that's so bad. Like, well, that's a nightmare. <laughs> if if a you're nice. taking a shit in a public bathroom, you already feel kind of terrible yeah. about it. You right? can't do shit. And then some guy puts his head under. <laughs> I'd be fucked it's, up. It's a helmet with a Trump sticker. He's like, I own you. I fucking own dude, you. I would, I would have been like, oh, this is the, I'm going to get killed. I'm going to get killed <laughs> shitting my, dude, can you imagine just getting killed by a transient nutcase dressed yeah. as Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. <laughs> I, I fucked up. I had a bunch of those bits though. Also, I was in a hotel lobby and I like an elevator door was closing on a maid with a maid cart. I ran and just jammed the ball into the elevator, make the doors open, <laughs> just spiked the ball into the elevator, started screaming and doing the belt. I had a bunch of those gags, but there was a good vlog too. It's just weird. Football fans and non football fans alike will love it. The people in Green Bay were so nice. Great place to vlog. Nice. We started the day. There were two guys who were just like arrogant cocksuckers. There was a, the, the news was doing a live interview and I was like, hey, should I go over? I just want to go up to the uh, news guys. I was like running to buy these dudes at this tailgate. Like, should I go over there and just pretend I'm retarded? Just like blabber into the microphone and start <laughs> drooling. They're like, I'm actually a special ed teacher, so I wouldn't really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, it's, I was I was like, uh, my mom's a special ed teacher, actually, which is true. Yeah. And they're like, huh, that's like saying you have a black friend, so you're not racist. And I was like, is this what it's going to be like? Are yeah. These guys all going to suck? But that was the outlier, and everybody else was just awesome. Nice. Everybody was so cool. Nice. Epic. Well, look, green. I'm looking forward to that video, and hopefully uh, I get to go on the next uh, travel, uh, you know, just to see Nico get hammered or come up with the, the next thing he's going to do. Yeah, you're going to help. Did he know, do anything? You're going to fish him off the decorative balcony with me? Yeah, exactly. But you didn't make him do anything, dress up, nothing. You didn't make Dino go in there. Certainly I mean, nothing of note when compared to what he did in that last video. Mm -hmm. Were people hyped on his performance? On, yeah, yeah, everybody Everybody <laughs> says that. Well, there's always a bunch of people said like, they're like, oh, Nico carried it. He's so good in front of the camera. But he's pretty good. He is goddamn good in front of the camera. It's it's honestly, I'm jealous of his look, too. He's so like <laughs> innocent. <laughs> Like nobody's gonna talk. He's he's kind of shorter. Uh -huh. He's innocent. He's got that high pitched voice. Yeah, he's so trustworthy. Yeah, he looks. You could absolutely believe he's retarded. Oh, you could believe one of many things. Brooks yeah. Cosover. Yeah. You could absolutely believe he's Yo. retarded. Put the uh, put that down. Hey, what's she's up? Coming. She's coming at six. Who's this guy? Okay. Who the fuck is this? He looks like your cousin or something. This is my sex slave. If you bring someone that is not <laughs> uh, vetted by Danny Mullen into this house, who are you? Dude? He's looking at me weird too. Are you a filmer? Open he's your bag. A, Put your a, bag on the he ground. He's not a face. He's not Mike. Swolby, this, check his bag. Swolby, yeah, take his bag. Take his bag. Shit, dude. Check his bag. It's for illegal paraphernalia. This is he's bullshit, here, dude. He's here for uh, important reasons. All right, Wait, Swolby, is, look through his bag. Is this Jizzy? What's up, bro? Wait, no, no. What the fuck is that? No, just check his but, bag hey, first. I check yeah, check his bag. All right. You, you brought a guy sure. named Jizzy into my fucking podcast, didn't you? You don't. You don't know who Jizzy is. I have no idea who Jizzy is. Why would I know who Jizzy is? What does he do? Jizzy is Dino's rival. It's okay. The, uh, R RPG, <laughs> CBX, um, it looks drugs. Like drugs. What uh, the fuck? He's uh he's got a June Shine. What the fuck Give it is to me. June that shine? is that is for me. Thank you. Mm. Truly, nice, Leo. Is that okay? I'm I'm taking this. Uh, <laughs> Pepsi is trying to give us diabetes. <laughs> It's Brooks anyway. The Pepsi extra sounds good. If it were a morning show or if Maybe. it were an afternoon show, I would drink it. No, it's too close to bedtime, Swolby. I appreciate it, though. A Budweiser. All Brooks. right. Who packed this? Happy Jizzy Brooks. or Brooks? Thank you. I appreciate you, Jizzy. You can take a seat. Brooks here. You can take your June shine. I don't want to take that from you. Those are like five ninety nine. Here you go. Nothing All right, illegal. Trade. He's good. <laughs> June shine? It's a, yeah, it's a kombucha that's like 7%. It's probably one of the healthiest things you can drink, and it'll get you fucked up. What is kombucha? It is fermented tea. Is it? Yes. Fermented? Yes. So it's just tea that's been left out too long? Uh, yeah, in essence, but it becomes... Tastes like it. it. It becomes... It has like a bitter taste, right? And it's not too... It's not sweet at all. It also has a probiotics that help you shit because there's live bacteria in it. So it's kind of like... Um, uh, it, it it would be like taking like a digestive supplement, but it happens to be alcoholic. Even though the ones that are sold that are not alcoholic have trace amounts of alcohol, so it's really easy for them to have alcohol. But um, yeah, they're great. You should try them. You should get into them. Healthiest thing you can drink. We're getting too far, man. People out there, we're get we've lost our way. I get that Coca Cola is an unsustainable beverage for the American public to be consuming. Yes, but now okay. I drank coconut water. Loved coconut water. Mm -hmm. It's too expensive. I had to give it up. Sparkling water has become my new alternative beverage choice. Brand of choice. That Love you like? I like Lacroix. Mm -hmm. I like Perrier. I don't Perrier even need flavor. Yeah. I like San Pellegrino. Whatever it takes. Yeah. But the kombucha, mm -hmm. the rotted tea, 
this mud water BS I keep seeing pop up in every pre-roll for every video I watch on YouTube. We've What's wrong with fucking coffee and regular tea that hasn't been left out in the sun, Leo? You're right about that. You're right. I understand what you're saying. How decadent have we become as a culture? What? The June shine? Let me see this. It's just significantly <laughs> more. It's so much healthier than beer. It has no carbs. It's gluten free. Take a shot of vodka. That Take is, a shot of that vodka is gluten free. and shut that's, your mouth. That's gluten free. You're right. It is. The high noons are actually just vodka and orange juice. Those are pretty good. This is probably Jizzy's idea to bring this. Maybe Jizzy. No, who? No, that's Jizzy such probably a did thing. what it, he probably a, 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 did his namesake act into the Jude shine. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably Jizzy, why it's nice and frothy why your, today. Why is your nickname Jizzy? Uh, Swobie actually coined it. Oh yeah, I gave <laughs> Swobie. No, <laughs> we don't give him that name. Are we why not using name? mics today? Why are we using mics today? Yeah, get it. You talking to the mic. Say it again. Yeah, Swobie uh, actually coined it during uh, Jizzy. Stream. All right. Yeah. Do so you need sex therapist help? We, we established. Here? Well, he, right. he, he, you he know a lot. He definitely does. I caught him doing Frequently, something. He doesn't okay. know. We we've right, established right, 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 right. that Swolby is maybe the worst giver of nicknames I've ever <laughs> met face to face. Yeah. Explain to me now why you called this man Jizzy. Because his name is Izzy, and I just added a J. <sighs> oh god. And it, I thought it would be epic, so I just called him Jizzy. It's good. It might be a little difficult oh. in social media circles because any video Jizzy's in and gets referred to by name gets demonetized. So it's kind of like um, the death knell of finances. So it's an algorithm killer is what you're saying? It might be an algorithm killer. Jizzy, you either got to change your name or you got to get the fuck out of my face. Honestly, dude. What what should we name him? Yeah, what's what's a better name? You you give him a name, dude. Give him like Young Rambo. You kind of look like a... (laughs) You look like Rambo when he was 14. I've gotten a young Al Pacino before. You do look like Pacino. I like something with Pacino. I fuck with young cool. Rambo. Sounds it's like got to be something name. insulting, though. So. Uh, how, how about we call him? Uh, what's some stuff in Scarface? Let's go through the yeah, stuff yeah, that yeah. happens to that. Okay, lots of cocaine. Lots uh, of cocaine. There's a lot of octopus eating. There's a lot of octopus eating. <laughs> we can call him um, Doctor Octopus. Doc, <laughs> Doctor o- Octopus. Doc Oc, bro. <laughs> Doc Oc. Doctor Octopus. Okay. These Doctor Octopus. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah, Doc Octopus. And I like. I like to say it all the full out, dude. Doctor yeah. Octopus. Doctor Bro. <laughs> Doctor Octopus. <laughs> Here he is. Dr. Dr. Octopus. Octopus. We're going to introduce yeah. him to the good doctor as Dr. Octopus. <laughs> All right. I like it. Hey, Jizzy, it's good too because Dr. Octopus, some people might think you have that nickname because you get a lot of pussy. Mm. Puss Dr. is in the title. Yeah, I'll take it. You're down with that? Pussy. Jizzy, I got your back. All right. You're no longer Jizzy. Now you're Dr. Octopus. <laughs> Do you have Octopus. a windbreaker that says fuck? I, yeah. You really God, are the doing. anti-money making. We might get age restricted based on that windbreaker. I say, I say, I don't think the good doctor will go for it, but I say we offer him as a footrest when she comes here, like for the entire pod. Doctor Octopus? Yeah, Doctor Octopus. I'm for it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I insist. You must have. You must do this. Yeah, she's gonna have to sit. I'll down pay you. I'll pay you twenty dollars. So. I'll do it for twenty. All right. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Oh, we're removing the windscreen. Oh, I was like. What? Oh, I get it. That thing out of that thing. I like it. We just got to be more disciplined with the swivel. She's bringing some sex toys too. The doctor told me. No. Some, yeah. So like we'll see. For, and for if not, on her okay. Or, yeah. What I know. It's just in that? general, she thinks it's good for sexual health. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, honestly, guys like Dino, you know, he's not going to be having sex with women Dino's often. Glasses. So he thinks porn is is cucking. There's a lot yeah, of things he thinks, he thinks about. Good. So sex toys could be something that Dino could get into. You know. I could see that happening. Hey, uh, Dr. Octopus, can you pick up? There's actually, speaking of sex toys, there's a blowjob machine underneath that red, white, and blue hat right there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I want you to, can you grab that? And I want you to put your fingers in it. <laughs> he, uh, Danny, I wanted to say Two something. I, I like, show. sometimes I like to rat on certain people that are new into the you know in the regime. No, you're good, you're good. And when someone yeah, said, I, I mentioned that there'd be no penises coming out, and Dr. Octopus he had a little like a yeah uh-huh, moment by uh-huh. himself over there. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he was worried that his penis was going to have to come out at some point. Yeah, I, I see this. I, I see what's going on here. Leo right now, they tell you when there's like a neighborhood dog that looks scary not to run from it. Mm-hmm. Well, Leo's the neighborhood dog and Dr. Octopus just ran away. Mm-hmm. Leo sensed his fear about pulling his penis out. And now mm-hmm. Leo, all he can think about is penis. <laughs> hey, man. He's laser focused. Why didn't you want to show your penis? Is there something you want to say? Speak it to the mic. It's more of like a, you know, I don't want to just pull it out right away. <laughs> you have, you're wearing a fuck sweatshirt. <laughs> 
know. It's more etiquette. You know what I mean? I don't want to just like pull it out. <laughs> you haven't you haven't been involved with any orgies at over at that house. I found he went up to Detron's room actually. What? Oh, you went to the the famous attic? Uh, the famous attic. <laughs> you went up. I don't know. I didn't go D- up with him. Are you kidding? Me? Detron is the is Detron gay or is he like trans at all? Uh, no, not he's he's. And I, I can't hear gay. Brooks very well. Brooks isn't really talking into the mic too. Cl- is it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, there it is. The mic pointed. So so he's just a gay guy. Detron's just a gay guy. Yes, just gay, cisgendered male there. gay. Right there, At, perfect. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Yeah. So you went up to his cellar and what attic? Excuse me. What'd you do? Oh, uh, he kind of just showed me around. Like, is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah. Show you around. Yeah, he showed me around. Showed me the attic, the deep attic where they filmed their like little movies and shit. <laughs> and I mean, at some point, it did get a little weird, and I just told him like, it's cool and shit. But like, <laughs> why to get weird? Trying to. Uh, did offer a blowjob. <laughs> I was just not a. Uh... Can you please do your best impression? No humor, no satire, just a straight up impression of Detron asking you for a blowjob. Channel his voice. Channel his essence. Uh, you can't get canceled. You can do it. You can do a little bit of a black voice. And also, to wondering. be canceled, you have to have some sort of profile first, don't you? Yeah, you yeah. can't just be Doctor Octopus. that kind of looks like a young Al Pacino that's on this. <laughs> The, the Leo and Danny show for the first time. Yeah, you're get canceled. You're dude. just like, are you to get kicked out of Swolby's apartment? Is, <laughs> yeah, is Swolby like, gonna cancel you as a roommate? Look, are they gonna call your work at fucking Coles and fucking talk shit? Like they don't even know where you work. Hey, dude. He's the loss prevention officer, Leo. How dare you? He's important. Yeah, I love the loss prevention guys at Coles. All so, right. how did Detron offer to suck your dick? It was pretty out there. Not gonna lie, he kind of just got up and was like, "So, am I sucking dick tonight or not?" <laughs> and I just told him he's straight, straight up, I was "Dino, like, go get the good doctor. She's not here." Tonight. Um, so he said, but you said you'd call him back and maybe later this week. I have his number. Were any drugs nice. involved? Because I feel like. Wait, so, so he said, am I sucking dick tonight? Yeah, exactly like that. Wow. D- okay, Detron is, imagine if there were women like that. Who would they, you would go over to a party. You're like a, a gangly, awkward kid in a fuck t-shirt. And just some chick takes you up to her bedroom Shows you a movie set and says, am I sucking dick tonight or what? I've had that exact same thing happen, but I wasn't a gangly kid with the fuck. Explain. It was, uh, I went to the, it, I was in middle school with this girl, but th- it wasn't in middle school when it happened. And, uh, but it was funny cause she was so shy and like never spoke, but we, we were in a party and, um, it, or rather we were on the way to a party, like a house party. This is a summer in between senior year and uh, me going to college and uh, she was a bit drunk, maybe more than I thought. And I was a bit drunk, maybe more than I thought. And we're in the back seat, and this is a, this is like an SUV. It's full of people. And she just starts unzipping my pants. And I'm like, what the fuck? And she's like, I'm going to suck your dick right now. Mm. And I'm like, no. Because, you know, I was a little bit inexperienced back then. But she just like literally oh, said. Oh, doctor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's very much, uh, it's a little messy in here, doctor. And we're very ashamed. You're stepping over a blowjob machine box. Yes. I just want to let you know. I'm gonna. Yeah, it sounds about right. She's mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give her. Let's give her some space, Danny. What yeah, do you yeah, think? Yeah. Uh, I think let's clear the couch. In, in yeah, between, we're in between Swolby and I, yeah. maybe. Swolby? I don't even. Okay, Swolby. Doctor Doctor Octopus, get on the floor. And Swolby, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to be on the. You're gonna have to be on the floor for the first part of this too. Just over here, Swolby. Just over here. We got to give the doctor some space. All the, Dr. On the floor. Doctor Octopus, figure it out. Be creative. All right. All the way on the floor. Yeah, that's good. That's good, right? To give her Just some so space. Dino can look right up your asshole. <laughs> I know I was signing up for a humiliation exercise. <laughs> is that it, that's that's kind of my thing a that's, little bit. This is my, my student. It's more of like a, it's almost like we're it's it's like a, a it's a it's a very f- frat like thing, but it's really something that he wants to participate in. It's nothing against his will. Yeah, yeah. No, Swolby, sit, Swolby, sit on, on the ground. ground. Swolby, on, on the ground. Off the couch. Off the couch, Swolby. Swolby, you're arguably the MVP of the Danny Mullen crew the last couple of months, but you're not going to take the microphone Swolby, over. Swolby, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sit. In fact, yeah, the doctor needs some space. Yeah, All right, Brooks, go. it's a pleasure to meet you. I have a lot of problems. Yeah, we have a, we have a few gentlemen, you know. You don't, need to sh- you don't need to shake his You don't need to shake his hand right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Doctor, you're looking even more lovely than I remember you looking last time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice to you, see you again. Thank you. We just need, can we get use you the right, mic? Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. right up in there. Yeah. Um, it was, it was this guy. Yeah, which is. All right. No. Um, he barely talked. You're going to need to move. 
Dr. Octopus, lay down flat. Pretend lay you're down dead. Flat, yeah. lay, lay <laughs> just down, lay down yeah. flat. That's good. Yeah. Just like that. That's good. And feel free to use him as a foot rest. That is normal uh, for him. He does that for a, like, yeah, for here, a living. Lie, lie mostly. down this way if I need to hand you the mic. It'll be easier if you... If we, someone I don't want to hear from Dr. Octopus for a long to, time. Either, don't I say just, anything. I don't want to. <laughs> don't say anything. Doctor, and again, I'm sorry. It's uh, We're really excited to have you again. So... Yes. And, and and doc, do you mind speaking directly into that mic? Is it still really quiet? It's, yeah, it's yes. a little and, quiet. On? Yes, it's on. It's, it's on. on yeah. It's definitely on. We There's can hear that, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If, you, if you project within a couple inches, it should be okay. It's just okay. Yeah, we just want to make sure that they can hear you. Okay. Leo, I'm going to let you run the first part of this segment. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything sexually you want to get off your chest. Uh -huh. I feel like that's probably the me. case. I feel like yeah. my situation hasn't changed much, Doctor. Really? I'm still dating the same woman. Okay. I'm still getting laid. Nice. <laughs> and Leo, however, is now single mm -hmm. and has now upped his exhibitionist sex acts, notably <laughs> blowjobs out in public in cars. That is he he likes to say that, Doctor, but the truth is that does happen on occasion. But I'm I feel like uh, I'm trying to expand my horizons. I you know we've had conversations, and mm -hmm. I do. There's a lot of uh, free um, help that you can get as a, as a person that believes they're a sex addict, and you've opened my eyes to those things. I attended a meeting once, only once. Okay. You did? It was a group meeting. Why yeah. did you ever talk about that? Because it's personal, Danny. I don't have to talk about everything on the Leo and Danny show. Well, how'd okay? it go? It went fine, okay? It was good. Um, I, I learned some things from it. I have to expand my horizons. It's about being an educated person. She put something on her story one time. It was that a true intellectual will pick, it will be more interested, or not more interested, but they can div diversify their interests beyond sex. And that's where I'm trying to get. I'm not there yet, okay? I, I'm, you son of a bitch. I'm trying to figure out how this speech went for Leo. I think it went something like, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Cutie. <laughs> I'm Leandro Dottavio, and I'm a sex addict. What's up? <laughs> you um, you, you on, on Instagram? Instagram? Yeah, I knew it. I, yeah, I got, I got an let's, Instagram. Uh, let's, yeah. take, let's take a picture real quick. <laughs> Send that to me. Send that to me. Yeah, Send that to me. <laughs> that's my move. I know that's your move. Oh, I've you spent time move. around you for the last three years almost constantly, uh, that dick is, face. That is a move. That is a move. That is a move. Now, um, so with your with your help, I I think I've improved only slightly percentage points. But there are other people in this universe this that's now growing, and um, <laughs> they need your help, Doctor. So you're a master we're on here. the Big Bang Theory now. The Big Bang Theory, yeah, the, the expanding Bang universe, Theory, yeah, the expanding Danny Mullen universe. Oh, that you know? universe. Yeah, this okay. universe. Yeah. I thought you meant the actual. No, no, no. Um, so Brooks is a is a guy that we have had on our channel for a while, and he is he is one that I would say is definitely he's got his issues, and um, okay. especially in the sex department. So. I would say that if you could give him, you know, if we could help him today, that would be great. So what would you, would you like to start with some questions? What do you, well, let, do you let's start? give her a little rundown of what uh -huh. Brooks's deal is. Brooks is the closest thing to a pure sexual hedonist I've ever met. What does that even mean? It means that it doesn't matter if you're fat, skinny, old, <laughs> young, black, man, white, woman. man, woman, tall, short, big dick, small dick. Whatever you are, whatever you have, he'll put it in his mouth. Well, it's the experience. <laughs> it's the experience. You know, how many people can say that they've done these things? Very few. Yeah, very few. It's so adventure. What's the problem? There we go. Well, he brought over a 58 year old <laughs> blues singer last yeah. week, and yeah. him and his girlfriend blew the guy. Maybe I would it's say fiance, fiance. Part of the problem would be maybe uh, risky sexual behavior, you know. Um, well, not a lot of condom hang use. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Is this your problem or is it his problem? Uh, we're talking about Brooks it's right now. It's my problem. We're, we're, we're all brothers I'm also here. We're all brothers yeah. here. Okay. Except, you know, yeah, uh, Dr. Octopus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's our physician. Yeah, yeah he, he's our okay. physician, yes. Uh, but we need a real doctor, so uh, I need a real doctor. I mean, okay. for me, I don't know. It's like I started with one thing, you know. You start out, you know, in kindergarten, like touching a vagina and like uh, in mm. underneath Jesus. the like – yeah that did happen i mm. did i in kindergarten i it, uh, i this girl it was she came on to me and she i don't know what problems she was having at home but I th my first sexual well and that's not true in preschool i did pull my dick out with like a bunch of like little black kids uh, but that's i think that, that that's He's from a, baltimore yeah. Yeah, yeah. no i'm not from baltimore this actually happened in greensboro north carolina my mom still statistically wanted, well my yeah. mom I, growing up as like a jewish upper class family sort like she wanted me to know 
about you know, she wanted to racially uh, uh, diversify. Like, I didn't really hadn't even hung out with a black person up to that point. Then I went to a Montessori school, which was all black kids. And at, during, you know, because you have nap time in preschool, it's a thing. And during nap time, they would do this thing. They all just pull their cocks out. What? And <laughs> it was like a thing. And so, uh, you know, I was always too shy to do it. But one mm -hmm. one day, I was finally brave enough. I was like, this is the day. I went in there mm -hmm. and I pulled my dick out. With all, but when I pulled my dick out, everyone's dicks like went back immediately. My dick was just out. I'm like, what's wrong, guys? What's wrong with my dick? And I look up. It's just the teacher standing Oh, there. shit. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you stack? up size wise um <laughs> honestly i don't really I, I don't even actually remember it was a dumb Back question then, continue well, <laughs> <laughs> but uh and then kindergarten you know because i had a lot of like i was felt like that was my sexual awakening and then in kindergarten <laughs> this this girl she was like uh came over to me during uh, snack time and she whispered in my ear do you want to be my boyfriend and i was like Yes. Okay. And then she's like, "Come with me. I'll show you what that means." And so during play play time or like you know recess, as it were, uh, there's there were these like clay tubes. I don't know. I don't think that they're illegal anymore because I haven't seen them in playgrounds recently. It's like all plastic, but they're I these big those. clay tubes. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a classic. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Come into these clay tubes." And so we went down there, and she was like, "Now show me your penis." And I showed her my penis, and she like pulled out her vagina, and she's like, "Do you want to touch it?" And I was like, "Okay." She pulled it out. She pulled wow. out. Like, well, I pulled out my really penis, big. and she like pull, showed down, like showed her vagina, ah. and she's like, "Do you want to touch it?" And I started touching her vagina. <laughs> she pulled out. Her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> she stretched her clitoris over the top of her jeans. I don't remember the. I do have a vivid memory of the experience, and I also remember bending over and showing my ass because I thought that was like a, like a private part. Okay, Dino knows okay. that move. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What? Doctor, you, I'm sure you have some thoughts on, on what is this child experimenting thing? What can that cause in, in, later on in life? And, and what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first, I want to say that it's actually pretty normal for kids mm -hmm. to experiment with their bodies, show each other their bodies, try to understand these parts that maybe their parents aren't talking a whole lot about or mm -hmm. maybe that they've been exposed to in, in ways that are you know more intense than their little minds can understand. So, uh, you know it's pretty normal for kids to play and mm -hmm. to learn in that way. Um, it can also be an indication that maybe they've been exposed to something inappropriate and they're trying to make sense of what that means. So mm -hmm. they're doing a repetition compulsion and trying to, you know, figure out what someone else did with them. So was there anybody family maybe who did anything inappropriate to you in your no, formative never, years? I mean, we had pajama time, but that was you like, and your brother. Everyone has pajama time, right? <laughs> you no, and your father. My, what is pajama it was a whole, time? It was like a fa it was like a family. Of, like, well, my mom told me not to. Well, I can't really talk about pajama. Time. Talk about pajama you have time. To talk about We've pajama hit on time. something big here, haven't we, Doc? We have. <laughs> <laughs> This is some ancient Jewish tradition. Like what no, What happened during pajama time? Hey, by the, before we continue also, yeah. the doctor has worked with sex offenders in jail, correct? That, yeah. For a long time. Yeah. She's done. She's heard it all. There's nothing that she is going to be shocked by. Yeah, but by. I don't want to incriminate you. I can't go into pajama time right now. Was this your family who started uh, yeah. this? Tr well, it started as family. Well, it was just, it was mostly family. Yeah. And this will incriminate somebody legally? Maybe. I don't know. I'd rather just not go into pajama time right now. Maybe it seems very a relevant. Session, a private session. Yeah, this is not a therapy session. No, no, of course not. I think so. I think this is a confidential therapy <laughs> session. I'll get your info Dr. Octopus. We'll go, in, we'll go into pajama time a little bit more. You're sworn to secrecy, Dr. Octopus. You can't tell anybody. <laughs> Swear to God, if you do, dude. We're telling literally everyone right now. Uh, we'll get. In, I, I'm gonna. Uh, what? What? I'll get your contact info because okay. maybe we go into pajama time on a, on a more <laughs> private scale. But um, was it traumatizing though? Do you think that's probably responsible? It was great fun at the time, but looking back on it, it might not have been okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Well. I really want to know what pajama time is. I really want to know. <laughs> We're going to leave it as a mystery for now. But, I mean, let people decide to them what they think mm. pajama time is. Did the young Brooks get erect during pajama time? I got my... I, I Well, I can't... Well, I can't actually remember because pajama time was so long ago. I do remember getting my first, like, memorable erection was during the like the scene in Titanic and I was like I asked my dad she had this boner I was like daddy what's happening and he's like son it happens to every man it was it was when the burly engine men were throwing coal into the fire <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does happen that to was a man. good part I mean that yeah, was, it was really a, sexy it, it was good but no I didn't have my first like actual like okay I'm feeling something truly sexually experience until sixth grade um, there was this kid where he was like, uh, hey, man, 
look under the desk right now. And oh. I was like, what? And I looked down. There's just this huge erect cock. Jesus. And I was like, I don't wait. I felt so violated, but mm. so interested at the same time. It was like, it was definitely a, a moment for me where I was like, there's something wrong. But I let that lay dormant in me because, you know, growing up in a family which was not very like, okay, you can't like those. Th- My dad told me penis in the butt is wrong. I had those mm. exact words. He was like, gay? Do you know what gay is? That's penis in the butt. It's wrong. Your dad sounds like Dino. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but my, my mom also told me, she's like, you realize... Rosie O'Donnell, I love Rosie O'Donnell. She's gay, but that's because when she was a kid, all of her friends called her gay and they made her gay. My mom has since true. changed her, her. It's my mom. No, has that's true. Your opinion, mom. But yeah, Rosie O'Donnell. And so in my head, I'm just like, I need to stay away from all this gay shit. But it just kept the gay shit. Just kept. Was <laughs> was I searching it out or was it like finding me? I couldn't. The, the gay spirits were hunting <laughs> I was hunted by the gay demons my whole life and it wasn't until the um it wasn't real I, I didn't act on it until the uh, Merritt Athletic Club in Baltimore the uh the 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 steam room that's where you had your first man that's my first the steam room there's something about a steam room what happened that, in the steam room Brooks well oh man you're re- you're really <laughs> Dino cover your ears <laughs> 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 So, um, uh, steam room is a classic gay hookup spot, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's up there. It's maybe number one, two. It was, it was like I went in there and, you know, it's all, it's just usually a bunch of old men. But, uh, that time it wasn't an old man. It was just a semi old black man. (laughs) A trend has been established. No, no, no. Here's the thing. He was in his late 40s. White, black, I'm not, uh, no Asian dudes. Just so we know. Wait, how old were you, Brooks? Oh, at this point, I was uh, like nineteen. Doctor, 19, uh, this 20. is this is quite the patient we brought in for you. I'm sorry. I mean, she, I don't think she sees much wrong with what what's going on right now. Well, though. the only thing, I, mm-hmm. the only thing that's maybe uh, a little bit more than dicey is just mm-hmm. all the shaming around it. Thank, thank you. There shouldn't be any shaming <laughs> with what he does. No. See, the six, there, there has to be a problem if you're just enjoying <laughs> yourself. And Dino, he's the homophobic, no, and t- we're I'll working on you, him, though, Doctor. For me, at the time, and even to this day. It posts like nut clarity. Like get after, to the sauna story. Okay, you yeah, after, after, on, after a little bit of like, uh, after a little bit of you know like slipping the towel away, if you know what I mean. Mm. Uh, he departed into the showers and gave me the eye, and I was like, the eye of Sauron, the all seeing eye. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> it was like. Oh, sad. I, like, mm-hmm. I was like, now is the time for me to take a shower. <laughs> it, was, it was doing the hissy voice. <laughs> was, gosh, oh, man. Suck your first cock. <laughs> I, yeah, it was, was, uh, it was, I felt the, it, it was like the call of the Nazgul. Like, I, the ring was calling to me. I knew, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew I shouldn't put it on but I Doctor, I'm sorry about this. And we shouldn't be shaming for him for this kind of behavior because this is completely normal. I don't see anything wrong with this. So you had a you had a gay experience when you were 19. Big deal. Wait, wait, wait he's he's still telling us what happened. Well, cause, so oh, you heard the Nazgul okay. call. What happened in the shower? Well, I could have gone I could have gone left to Rohan or I could have gone right to Shelob straight to Mount Doom and <laughs> I fucking I went right he went right and I knew that too so I, Rohan yeah I could. so you rode him like a horse <laughs> <laughs> no there was no riding but it uh it did escalate as uh, I caught his eyes from uh, across the other shower completely curtains open mm-hmm. just um it just got it, it just I can't get in. It's just, I'm ashamed. You know, why are you ashamed? ashamed? Because I've been shamed so much by people around me. Okay. Well, stop it. He's Listen, you're being so we don't gay shame right him. now. We, in fact, Tell us what happened. We, we like, we, we enjoy when Brooks is sexually free because it gives us some stories, but, but I'm, you, you're, you like the gay shit, but there's a lot of straight shit too. I'd like to, you to mm-hmm. know, I, I that's just bragging. Super sh- yeah, you're right. Okay. So my shame <laughs> back to my shame. Yeah. So as he was stroking his erect member within the uh, shower, <laughs> uh, <laughs> across for me, we locked eyes, and I knew I was like this. I was like I felt the ring, like I, I had to. Put it on. <laughs> I love this analogy. <laughs> that was his sphincter. That was not the ring. No, that was my mouth around his cock. Mm. Yeah, and it was like I felt this presence in my mouth, and I was like, this feels wrong. I knew it was wrong in my head. I was like, I can't be doing this. Why? Why is this happening to me? And yet, 
I can't stop. And so it got to a point where um, ejaculation occurred and not in my mouth. That's too gay for me. I'll take it for well, me. Well, let's. Well, maybe we can use this to to help somebody else that might be a viewer that's that's thinking. Maybe, maybe they're ex- in their experimental stages. Doctor, what do you say about like uh, what what's wrong with experimenting and what why are people being shamed about you know why why is this something shameful for a man in in two thousand twenty two? Well, it really shouldn't be, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we can think a lot more expansively about sex, and when we think about you know, how to experiment with our own pleasure and how to mm-hmm. experiment with, you know, who we are as a result of that pleasure or in conjunction with that pleasure, I think it can be really freeing and really fun and really erotic for people to experiment with being sexual with people of different genders if that's mm-hmm. something that they're curious about. You just have to be married first. The, the issue <laughs> there in li- it, it, <laughs> yeah. the issue for me became yeah. <laughs> overconsumption because okay. from the, once... I, I had started down that path. You can't, you know, you can't put your hands to plow and look back or you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And the work had begun. And I knew that if I turned back now, then all of my past acts would have become shame and I had to embrace it. So, but you were like, uh, you were like Frodo after he got stabbed by the Morgul blade and he almost became a wraith. I had to go to the great havens. I knew it was, it it was, it it all goes back to Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, At the end of the day, Lord, my dad did read me that during pajama time. So, (laughs) Oh (laughs) no. Uh, But we'll uh, away from what now I'm thinking about it. You're bringing Mm -hmm. repressed. uh, But anyway, yeah. So, uh, the overconsumption really like art school going to art school and this is right like i got the gym membership in art school and i began yeah. to trauma like, plus art school equals gay oh yeah exactly so <laughs> i ended up like i became kind of, i don't want to say a bad guy but like i was just you know sleeping with these hairy beautiful but like hairy girls and there's nothing wrong with that obviously but it was definitely wait what do you you mean by hairy women i'm talking hair it's art school one time there was hair on this girl's nipples and i was like that is I'll tell the it's armpits totally is what the, normal. totally normal and it's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, anyway, that uh <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I'm just saying all different kinds, all different kinds of people that I never even I was like, but if for me it was like I must partake in the forbidden pleasures upon which I have never chosen before because once you try one thing, it's on to the next. Like the penis and the 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 showers, that was just a gateway thing for me, mm. really. And so, like I said, it led me down this dark path and, you know, I had to find a way to satiate my desire. So I began to allegedly sell particular things that I'm not going to go into what it could be anything really. But allegedly I started to make a ridiculous amount of money, not on the books, allegedly. And with this money, I was able to really, um, uh, you know cash in on on all of my pleasures prostitution and because you, were, you went no, to prostitutes no 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 i didn't pay i didn't pay for sex i, I paid for hundreds of bottles of wine shroom dry, yeah everything and i yeah. had these mat because i had this huge art studio warehouse the party came to you i brought i brought we had these orgies a, a true bacchanals really like it just everyone was so drunk and things i've got yeah things would just get more and more and more intense and then after i had one thing it was like ah, i throw this away I, I i no longer wanted it it was like i had experienced it and now it was on to the next thing i was like so i have had this you know i've consumed it but i hunger for more and so um i just had to do what I, like, it started with the money and the drugs and then i just had to keep going until i you know, was able to like reach something. Like I didn't know what that something was, but I kept uh, you know, the greyhound chasing. You know, the around taking a left and a left. It was a a regular NASCAR affair. I just needed to find the finish line, and even to this day, I don't know what the finish line is. Which is so, a problem because he's engaged now. Well, no, my my uh, partner and I are very sexually positive. Uh, po- not for AIDS or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that too. But they're also sexually positive. No, no, no. I had chlamydia one time and i i've we're we're good uh always condoms and stuff but mm-hmm. unless with her but uh yeah no uh, and it's good to be with someone who's uh, very like willing to experiment and do crazy things we were with this one guy last night he was trying to have it like he called it a two-hour session and i was like come on now i'm trying to go to sleep how'd that was, go the two-hour session no i didn't do the two-hour session he was on meth i was like no fucking way so I'm, they're having safe sex doctor is the point well yes yeah, they're bringing strangers sex. over on meth 
It, it, so that so when do you know that you have a problem, doctor? And what are the signs? <laughs> might have been might have been the meth the addict meth showing up at two a.m. When the when a meth addict comes over at two two a.m. to have sex with you and your partner, two-hour session, two hour. um, that's I would say that that might be risky sexual behavior. But when when do you have to? What do you what do you what are the signs to look for where you you might have a problem? Yeah. So uh, if you if you want to understand if you have a problem, I think it's first important to take an inventory of what are the consequences of your behavior, positive and negative. Mm -hmm. And if there are negative consequences that arise because of your sexual be behavior or the ritual that you engage in to procure that behavior, mm -hmm. then I think it's time to start reevaluating. You know, is this a good thing for me, or might it be destructive in my life? But that's really a subjective thing for every single person to establish for themselves. So. One person might say inviting someone over that you don't know who's on meth is pretty risky. <laughs> and another person might say, it's a risk I'm willing to take. You roll right. the dice, right? Am right? So yeah. The doctor is just... Do yeah. But isn't it irresponsible, Doc? Because we're assuming the meth addict drove himself over. So right there, there's a DUI to and from the house. Well, that's the, that's the meth... Uh, using mm. person's decision to right. make, right? That's their risky behavior. But he's mm. enabling that guy to go get pussy and cock. Brooks. And probably steal things from your house for meth. No, no. Well, well that is a risk. Uh, I, 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 I monitored the entire mm -hmm. him the entire time. If he had tried to overpower me, I, I, I would have gator style. Gator style. We don't yeah. need. To, it, we don't need to get into gator style, but it has more than once gotten me out of a lot of things. Okay. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Sorry, doctor. We are we're jumbled here, but we're trying to we're trying to get your help. But yeah. uh. Now, well, it sounds like you guys are all really concerned about him. We're concerned about I him, just, but maybe I, it's because we're just shaming him. See, I like I like the way you you your stories are very informative, and if you don't follow the doctor, please do. Um, she has she puts stories every day that I think are eye opening, and for his behavior is it shouldn't be shamed by us. Correct. Like, and I would say one of the biggest shamers here, and Danny can attest to this, is this this kid yeah. here, Dino. Mm. He's he, the, that's the problem. He's my student. I teach him oil painting. Mm. Uh, doctor, he's a he's a, a he's a child. He's nineteen. Yeah. And doctor, he said that Brooks should attend thirteen Catholic mass sessions for each cock he sucked in his youth. He, he's and that's, with religious. My schedule. It's absolutely not possible. That's so the only way to he, repent. He thinks he says things like that. Uh, that uh, watching pornography is cucking that to him because you're watching another man have sex with a woman. He says that. Uh, he even said last week that if you got a blowjob from two women, that that is homosexual and blasphemy, and he wouldn't he wouldn't actually participate in that kind of thing. So he's There's a shamer. Two people of the same sex. That is the definition of homosexual. See, he's got a logic. Take to your it. glasses off. I want you to look because well, if you, he's I not as swag as fuck with the glasses. <laughs> Take them off. Yeah. I want to talk about that for a sure, minute. Sure, please. So, yes. Listen, people can be sexual with people of the same sex or people of the same gender and not, in fact, identify as gay. Yes. They can, in fact, identify as straight and still participate in sex with people who have the same genitals that they have. But, you know, to your point, it sounds like you're very religious. So if that's something that doesn't work for you, then you probably shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. He does anyway, though. Oh, all what right. The fuck? And doctor, it's funny because, you know, know he he's... hasn't been up to Detron's room, but I know there's something going on. Um, we, we had a uh, doctor with that story that we're talking about this guy, Detron. What happened was we had a guy that used to hang out here. And one night he... He got a blowjob from a man. And he was a considerably a, he got his asshole. He got his asshole. He got a blowjob from a man. Not leave that out. He considered himself a straight man. He had so much shame that he left town and disappeared. He changed his phone number, and we haven't heard from him again because he got he got blown in an attic, basically. Which really, we wouldn't have cared to be honest. Would you have cared that much if it was in a cellar? I'd be like, eh, kind of gay. Right. But the attic, attic. it's novel. Also, exactly. can I just say I do exactly. actually kind of consider myself like kind of straight, mostly straight. He's a ladies' okay. man. I'll, I'll say that. I refuse. I've, that seen, him, I've well, seen him with well, so many. I mean, like, it's a continuum. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm constantly. It's like you know, during the winter, I build a little chub, you know, hibernate a bit, and with summertime, skinnier. It's a, with sex. It's very similar, except with you know, I, I'm I'm mostly straight, but then you know, I can appreciate as an artist like. You know the aesthetic of a good male phallus. Sure. You know, like the kind, and like it's just something that I'm like, okay, and I, I could put my mouth on that, but I don't get fucked. I don't fuck. I don't kiss. I don't do too, like because that to me feels that's wrong. That's gay right? shit. I couldn't. Yeah, it's too gay. <laughs> there's and no I, shaming here, Danny. Stop so I, there's the, all these different. There's these different levels to it. You know, I can't have an emotional relationship really with a guy because. 
you know, I that just it feels because wrong. Because romantically, yeah, yeah. you don't identify. Exactly. Right. Yeah, sure. I'm romantically so straight. Now look, I'm sensing that the doctor is looking at all of us and saying. I've been around some real sexual deviants. Most of them were in jail. So she doesn't <laughs> sense that none of us have much of a problem. No, I, so I want to know about what would you say when you spent some time with with the inmates in jail? Can you tell us a story or maybe what was the I know that there's some confident confidentiality. Do you, do you want her to make Brooks feel normal? Right exactly. Now? I'm trying to. So give us maybe what was a, like an like something that was like common that you would run into with these sexual deviants in jail that they had experienced when they were young or maybe things that happened to them that created the monsters that they may, they may, may be. Sure. So first I'm just going to change your language a little bit. Sure. The word, the language sexual deviant sounds mm -hmm. like judgy awesome. and shamey. And, You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll, That's okay. We'll, we'll call them together. filthy perverts. And I'm learning. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, how do you like filthy perverts? Is we'll that... call them offenders. Offenders. Right? Offenders. Okay. <laughs> offenders. Call them offenders. They've offended some law. Sure. Um, okay. So uh, one of the things that was really, really common uh, was for a lot of the men who I worked with to have grown up in households where they saw their mothers being abused mm. um, pretty viciously by their fathers, stepfathers, male figures in their lives. It was very common that they themselves had been physically, sexually, emotionally abused. Um, for a lot of the offenders who maybe were not as highly psychopathic, for the more psychopathic offenders, that wasn't always part of their early childhood, right? Psychopathy has a different sort of neurobiological organization, and um, those offenders didn't always come from abusive households. Okay. The psychopathic offenders, what defines that? Because I, the, the ones you're referring to, the other offenders who grew up in abusive households, I've heard a lot about how sexual abuse is passed down through the generations. Mm -hmm. uh, if a child is abused, his odds of their of growing up and abusing others is so much higher than if he had been raised in a loving household. I'm not a I'm not familiar with the Patrick Bateman types though. The sociopaths who are going out there and I don't know what pressing their nutsack against a bus window. What were those people doing? <laughs> that is uh... like all sorts of clinical things that you just mentioned in that. Mm -hmm. Um so let me think about how to answer that. First, uh, just because someone is sexually abused does not mean that they have a higher likelihood of growing to become an offender. I want to just nip okay. that. Um, but there are many offenders who have abuse histories in their past. Um, so when it comes to people who are more uh, sociopathically organized, what that means is they tend to have more of a frenetic energy around their offending patterns. They're more impulsive. Uh, they're more um, uh, opportunistic. They're... Uh, you know, they tend to have some remorse. Usually it's around getting caught. But, um, you know, they can sometimes feel a little bit of genuine concern for what's happened. Um, for people who are psychopathic, we tend to think of psychopaths as sort of the, the most intense on the antisocial personality disorder scale. And for people who are psychopathic, their offenses are typically more planned, more controlled mm. and they definitely don't feel uh, you know remorse Jeez. around this kind of behavior so are, are their offenses different than ones who are, are, are victims of abuse no not always i mean uh, sometimes people who have been abused tend to repeat some of the same styles of abuse that they've experienced um, but not all the time and so uh, psychopathic offenders do that does that tend more toward men raping women or men abusing children or both uh, the the groups of folks who I've worked with, it's a pretty even split. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, as how many women did you run into that were offender? I mean, in, in I mean, a fair amount. There uh, is a fair amount. I, I used to work in women's prisons too, and so it's the number is much smaller than right. men offenders who are male. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there definitely are female sex offenders. Mm -hmm. Well, the re the reason we brought this up is because the man on your right, Swolby, is a sex offender himself. So. <laughs> and we're going to well, get him up on the guest. I kind of have a feeling what we, we brought him on to because he has an addiction to going to the street called Figueroa. It's in downtown and it's <laughs> it's very well known to have prostitutes. And he yeah, he yeah. frequents it. But like I, but but I've seen that you post that sex work is 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 normal. It should be normalized. Well, so it's illegal, but right. I think it should be legalized. Absolutely, and me too. Regulated because Stop it, the Swole. safety. Of the sex workers is she doesn't want to touch you. The safety, the safety, exactly. Yeah. We don't want. Yeah, it's it's already horrific that they have to 
you know, put themselves out there on, on a street, Figaro, and, and a guy like Swoby is going to go there and yell things from yeah. his car. Give us an example of something you've yelled. It's it's terrible, and you should be better about this. But yeah. what have you yelled from your window? Just, just, just yell it right now. Hey, baby. Oh, God, I don't know. What? Let me hear uh, what you something hey, yo, you feel. baby. Yeah, yeah. How much? <laughs> no, I don't say. I, I don't really... He once said, "Hey, baby, dome me up to a girl on the street." <laughs> no, no, you gotta, It was wrong. Like more Everyone's got their. Like, Sobe, stop. <laughs> sit, she needs more space. Stop it. Sit on the ground. What's, uh, how? Leo's used to this. Leo's used to calling the dog Swolby off when he gets too close to women. <laughs> how? How? How much? How? How, how much? Yeah, like, yeah. Negotiate. Really All right. So that way. see that is it, it can be more pleasant for them, right? So. Vegas, though, has still kind of it's almost like a criminal type, you know, underworld with with prostitution, too. And it's legal there. So mm -hmm. what do you think the right steps are to make sex work an improved uh, profession? Would you say maybe? Yeah, great question. I mean, if I were queen of the universe, mm -hmm. I would make it um, legalized nationally and immediately put in tons of protections that help the sex workers have a safe environment to work in, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that they get fair wages, mm -hmm. make sure that everything that they agree to participate in is what happens and there's nothing outside of that. So right. there would be consequences for people who violate the agreements. Um, I, I would make it just a far more ethical practice because the reality is like, you know, some people really enjoy having that as an option. Oh, yeah. And sex work is real work. It's really mm. hard work. Of course. So I think, you know, we could do yeah, a lot people better. People have sex by... with Fulby. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's labor. She we could do that. a lot better as a culture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, wow. See, th this what is. What if I issued a counter argument? What's Can that? I issue a counter argument? These are the Christian, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they're Trump supporters, but. They might even be part of some some very questionable Reddit forums, um, doctor. <laughs> so this is what I just want to preface that by saying whatever they say, we don't agree with R slash the Donald. And, and also, yeah, yeah. I, I will say, doctor, too, that they're also hypocrites because the one on the left has spread his ass cheeks and showed them to a woman here on this podcast consensually. Yes. She mm -hmm. she wanted she it more wanted than to him. See his asshole more and, than he did. And he did. Yeah. And yeah. then he with the aforementioned guy who went up into the attic and gave a guy a blowjob, excuse mm -hmm. me, received a blowjob, he and this guy right here double teamed a fan on the beach. They so did. they don't always don't practice what they preach. They don't I just want to make that clear. I like that you're clarifying it was a double team and not a threesome. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Sometimes it gets a little twisted. See, that's sexist in, in, in its own right. But yeah. I just, I my counter argument is... It's okay. We don't... Is oh, okay, to that. Yeah, perfect. Basically... Not necessarily sex work, but this whole like super pro sex, like it's perfectly fine if you just want to go have a gang bang with like 50 people. But there are like statistical problems with that, like children out of wedlock being 12 times more likely to, you know, be impoverished. And then you have all these I'm like illegitimate kids and other. <sighs> Yeah, well, twelve sounds a little high, see, but the, it's definitely true. I'm just using the doctor's going to need some math. General explanation that there mm -hmm. are benefits to monogamy and not just having sex with anybody that you know wants to have sex with you. So, well, as like a physician or whatever that you've mm -hmm. gone to school, like is that is there legitimacy to that or no? I don't think so. no. No, I mean I appreciate your opinion, but mm -hmm. I I don't think that it holds because. Do there are a lot of other variables that we have to take into consideration. And when you improve things like sex education and you teach people how to have healthier sex, safer sex, you actually reduce the likelihood of unwanted pregnancies. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I agree with that. But if my friend went up to me and said, hey, bro, I just had sex with like a bunch, like 12 people at the same time. I wouldn't be like, good job, man. Go you. I'd be like, but why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's because there's a lot of like societal issues that happen with that. I mean, there. What if there weren't? I. How could you not have? I mean, what if he used twelve addicts. condoms? It's the what same if, thing as drugs, what if he used twelve different condoms? See, I think I think what what is really hard for a lot of people to kind of understand is the ways that we've been really socialized mm -hmm. in an unconscious and conscious way to be incredibly sex negative and incredibly rigid around sexuality and to assign and conflate it with our worthiness as human beings no but i'm yes. just talking about it's an it's an evolutionary tr like monogamy is an evolutionary thing that we've you know built over about? time i mean it, I, I assume it's just because it, you raise kids better if you're not knocking up a bunch of chicks all the time by accident i mean now we have condoms and birth control and stuff but in the past i assume that wasn't the case and that's why 
It was probably a lot of have illegitimate kids everywhere or somebody accidentally impregnating your girl and then you're raising another man's baby. I don't think there's another there's a person in the whole planet that would want that to happen. Well, a long time ago, we used to live in communities and be far less um, invested in individual pair bonding. So when we started um, making the shift toward a more agricultural type of being, um, we started to divide things like land and resources. Mm. And that's when it started to become more important to folks that, oh, I want to make sure that all of these children I'm feeding are being fed from the resources that are mine and that they are mine, right? Otherwise, I would like them, their resources to come from someone else's pile. So it, it was sort of a, an arbitrary decision. I, I don't say arbitrary, but it made sense at the time. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the way it needs to be forever mm. or that there's some sort of um, fault in people who choose non-monogamy. What about like divorce rates for people who wait until marriage to have sex all um, it's it's basically statistically proven that they're they're less likely to be divorced because then if you have a whole bunch of sexual partners your whole life and then you get with the person that emotionally you really connect with but you're so used to this suck and fuck mentality <laughs> and then maybe your partner isn't that like be a that. t-shirt <laughs> doctor how do you fuck how mentality do you, doctor how do you argue when when somebody uh quotes like statistical things and, and there's no like uh you know the, he doesn't have a bibliography or anything to show like how do you argue with that or what do you say to that i, mean, I think you, you don't you just sort of yeah. assume it's an emotional argument mm -hmm. so. can, can it I, is an I, emotional can, argument from identity based can, argument can, identity well. based can i try to summarize a little bit what i think both of you are saying one thing i agree with what the doctor said is that the most the communities that I see the highest level of unwanted pregnancies are the communities where they're kind of toying with religious fundamentalism and sexual experimentation. Mm -hmm. It's always the semi-Catholic girl who ends up popping out a baby at 16. Mm -hmm. It's always a girl in Utah who was a practicing Mormon. The, the who, they also you know, don't tend to get abortions. The Latinos, religious, the Latinos so. in LA are extremely Catholic, and that is usually why they, if they are, they might like. I knew a few girls that had children like in high school and if you took the shame away from reproductive education i don't i think those pregnancies would be vastly reduced however to to give austin's point here some support i don't think it can be argued that children raised in single households have a lower chance of success in life than those raised by two parents Correct. i mean statistics there are pretty obvious Wait, i don't know what they yeah, are yeah yeah, and like Where if I you, was wait, raised up my whole life with random dudes coming into my house like all the time, like if I see my parents were in this open relationship and I'm like a nine year old kid and then, you know, this random guy's coming over to bang my mom, like that's probably gonna fuck up your head, you know. So Just, you're not talking about non monogamy though here. You're talking about poor parental boundaries. I'm talking mm -hmm. about there are sexual behaviors and things that you can say are probably a, a net negative generally speaking for most people Let me just simplify. like doing drugs be. for most people probably isn't a good idea but there are those portion but, of people that can do drugs very very responsibly uh, can i just simplify it even more doctor just single parent household two parent household the children in the single parent household are less likely to go on to career success and happiness later in yeah life. i jumped to a different um, I point that. i kind of messed that up no i i don't know that that's it, true. it's about 12 what, what is your what is your uh, less i don't likely let, to be let's, let's let her counter real quick what is your take on that situation why do you not know that well because i haven't read the most recent research mm -hmm. on that and i don't think anyone in this room has either do you think there so, is a bias think, though for very yeah, pro really sex <laughs> let, let's, research like let, i don't see anyone having like a counter argument to any of this kind of pro-sex mentality, even within like the educational fields, just because it's so shunned down with like the media and stuff, I feel like. Well, I think that's an incredibly biased perspective. There are people on all sides of this conversation who are doing a lot of research, and certainly there are a lot of people who are more sexually conservative who have been doing research for a long time. So that research does exist, but there is absolutely a trending movement to have more inclusive sex positive research because it's necessary. It's necessary because, you know, certain groups have decided these are the values that we are going to live by, right? And that's great for those groups. But those groups do not get to dictate the lifestyle and the values of other groups of folk. So we have to have a little bit more of a tolerant, expansive understanding of the diversity of sexual behavior that is healthy and natural and mm -hmm. okay if we stop conflating it with 
worth as our as a human being i've never i didn't say anything about worth though it's it was pragmatic like the way it affects families and societies it does not you. like i don't think of brooks any less because he's going out and doing any things it, value what wise about, what about the, i just had a gangbang on a beach or a double team mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not really like, uh, yeah, I guess Danny said I'm a hypocrite or <laughs> you whatever, know a lot, but I'm willing to have those kind of conversations. To your point, though, to your point, if I think it is less relevant who the people having sex would be. If two parents are having sex just with each other in front of their kids a lot, that's going to leave a really um, yes. indelible mark on the psyche of their children. Mm-hmm. Who's to say more or less of a mark if they were people from uh, outside the relationship? I don't think there's any research on that. But... Definitely. I don't know. I'm just very grateful my parents weren't swingers. She was saying that if they, she's saying if a parent is making the decision to have sex in front of a child that's with the their partner, I'm with their father, fr- or a rando, either way, that's the, the problem is they're having sex in front Dude, of a child. Dude, if random guys are coming in and out of your house and you're nine years old, you know what's up. You're not stupid. You know they're maybe, banging. Maybe. Well, can we, can we, so Austin, I think we should move on right now, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I, do, I do want you to pull up, though, because I, I, I don't think you could argue it, doctor, that children raised in double parent households go on to more success later in life i think i could make that argument because there are a lot of children who are raised in double parent households where that double parent dynamic was absolutely toxic destructive abusive Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe they were um you know subject to a parent who was not getting help for mental health issues or addiction issues and that dynamic could absolutely um interrupt uh, an otherwise healthy trajectory if those parents had lived separately yeah absolutely two parent households can produce rotten children Evidence is Leander <laughs> Ottavio <laughs> sitting to my left. Right no, I, but I, I was going to say, I was, it's, I was going to mention. Statistically, I, I, I mean, if you pull it up, I don't know. I'm not smart. I'm not well, a like researcher. Said, can, can we even trust but anything I, that's online, doctor, for example? Like, where's the real research? Is it is it is it somewhere in a in a deep in a, the research halls of a, of a university? Like, where are the real where's the real research? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Because um, everything we Google, I mean, who cares? You know, Yeah, you've got to be able to think critically about research. You've got to think about who constructed the study. Right. How is it constructed? What's their motivation? What statistics are they using? How are they interpreting it? There's a lot of actual critique that's required to even think about if a study is valid. So, right. you know, your question is really on point, but, you know, to be fair, asking the Google, mm-hmm. if it's not um, an empirically validated or peer-reviewed study, it probably isn't something you should put a ton of stock in. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, for example, I just I, think those peer-reviewed and a lot of those institutions can be biased as well. Of course. I th- there's, and then there's an argument thinking. with saying, yeah. and I have, yeah, I have critical something thinking, to, exactly. to bring up about um, uh, the current culture that, that it has a, it, there has a, there's a sexual base to it that I think could be solved even maybe with prostitution the, almost every school shooter, this is statistically actually true, was an involuntary celibate. Or yes. It was an incel. And it was right. a guy that hated women. Eric because, Harris got a fair amount of pussy. <laughs> That is actually true. He was just a psychopath. Well, yeah, but the point of the story, they, and most of them even had, like, I don't know if they were up, their upbringing was great or, or how what it was like, but they had two parents, a lot of them, but they ended up getting a, buying a gun and shooting up a school. So <clears throat> because of their hate towards women. So what what is that? And that is, it seems to be something that's very common in the United States. Where do you think that's coming from? How can we com- combat that? We had a conversation about, uh, uh, of, it was one of my patrons that says that I, I made him a, a no longer an, an, an incel. Mm-hmm. And I felt really good about that. And it was for, it was really just big brother advice. <laughs> saved him. I saved him. I saved him. It was just big brother advice, kind of like, hey, get out there and just say hello to a few girls. I mean, guys, uh, I feel like uh, you don't, if you don't, some, some fathers are weird about talking to, to their children about maybe how to, uh, you know, their relationship with sex or women. And, and and they never get to that point. I know Danny had an inch, a completely different relationship with his uh, with, in in you know the conversations with sex with his father that I had with my father. But mm-hmm. how how do we combat the problem? Because it is a problem with the, the incels that that end up being violent towards women towards just gen, the general public. What what is something we can do? What and what yeah. do you think that's attributed to? Also. Well, I think a lot of people are really lonely right now. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons that the incel population is, uh, well, <laughs> that there even is an incel population is because so many men are not really socialized to have um, healthy friendships with other men first. Mm-hmm. So they tend to be rather isolative. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might have social anxiety concerns. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and they've really sort of sunken into this echo chamber of relying on women for a lot of their relational, sexual, and emotional needs, and then having a tremendous amount of fear and resentment of, of that dependence. Mm -hmm. So it creates in them this paradox of wanting something they feel like they can't have, not really going for it, because the rejection feels terrifying, right? Right. And then when you don't get what you need, guess what? You start to develop resentment, and resentment turns into embitterment, mm -hmm. and resentment and embitterment turn into entitlement, and that's when we see people taking action into their own hands to act out with violence or mm -hmm. to act out with offending behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this community is a community in desperate need of help. Yes. And I would love to see more healthy male role models who are challenging some of the constructs of masculinity that plague these these young people. <laughs> That's not us. And well, well but, 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 like, but at the same time, I mean, approaching a, a woman in an educated way and, and, and trying to be charming or something, is, that, there's, is there something wrong with that? I mean, it's not... I mean, I understand that, you know, nowadays maybe society, they want to say, like, the woman should be also doing that. But I, it, it's not going to happen most of the time, you know? Are you trying to spin yourself as a new age male type right now, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> you are as red meat, st fucking stubble, <sighs> chasing pussy, I dirt am, bag. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I know, I know that. I know that, Danny. But there is, it's never too late to grow. You know, when I'm around, uh, you know, someone like the doctor, it makes me want to be a better man. Grow. All right. If I'm being honest. I have two yeah, sisters. I problem, though, that I would yeah. I didn't get to tell you like the rest of my. Like, <laughs> oh, God. It's like you they, know? they want they want the enlightenment. But uh, well, you know, it's not just like the, the fig chicks or <laughs> uh, going to like an Asian masseuse. Um, it's just, like I, my ex-girlfriend was like uh, only fans girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she was really bipolar, but I think that <laughs> oh opened God. opened up my world to like sex work, and I wasn't really like this before. And um, also, I like to just go raw dog and chicks, and it feels better. Like, I'd, <laughs> I'd rather, you know, like I'd fuck blowjobs. I'd rather like dip the dick like raw. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's like. I, Swobie. Yeah, you, that's Swobie, I told you to be classy. Those are, are my this? thoughts. Yeah, where are you going with Thank this? Thank you so well, much for sharing. I, I say we that. find out. I say we find out. Where say, are you going well, with let's this? Let's let him keep going. Let's let him go. Well, why do I have this? Why do I have this habit of just wanting to just go raw? Like, you're, it feels better because you're a star, like, I don't dude. Fucking like condoms. You're a star, Swobie. It sucks. Like I, I can't. Like I just go on forever, and it just never fucking start pleases me at all. But when I don't have a condom i'm like hell yeah this is the shit <laughs> i mean you're not reinventing the wheel with this epiphany right buddy. yeah most people do not like condoms mm -hmm. but they're a necessary evil if you're trying to practice safer sex yes we'll be would you have sex not, all yeah choice, you're gonna knock a chick up bro yeah. in your yeah. case mr figueroa safe sex is important yeah and i never really nut with the fig chicks Okay. So I was going to like, say, with the with the Vegas girls, you definitely do. Yeah, because I was going raw, but you know, <laughs> he raw dogged a fan, Doctor. Yeah, is that an abuse of power? To is bring it? on a fan? He no, had yeah. sex with a fan of our channel. Yeah, I, it could yeah. be. Depends on the context. Yeah. So, Wolby, how did you seduce her? We never really got that whole story. I just made out with her, and then I just took her upstairs, and that's all she wrote. Any red flags, Doctor? I don't know enough about the context, but it sounds like it could be sketch. They were no, <laughs> no. Oh my god, it was doctor. I, I don't want to. I dare I say that the next morning there was a quote. Does anybody want to say what she said the next morning? What she said? Oh, I don't remember anything. Oh. Yeah, but that was she was so yeah, joking. She would, she would, she we sound like such dicks. It, it was consensual. It was it was, it was completely it was consensual. It was consensual. Um, she she took Plan pretty, B the next morning. It was like bye bye little Swolby. Yeah, so, yeah she was, don't take my points away from me, Austin. God damn. What do you mean? What did I say that we took your points away? I shot a three. All right, it was a legitimate three. It was. It was good. Um, well, no, I was just saying y'all were banging all night. Like multiple exactly. times. Yeah. The doctor, yeah. <laughs> Swolby, the doctor doesn't think you have a problem. Your addiction so to I don't sex have a work. Your addiction I love the way you speak for me. I'm sorry. I'm not. No, I, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do I, do I not? Go ahead. Fuck. Go ahead, doctor. I, I just, that's what I was feeling because I don't, I mean, the sex work thing is, that's your choice. Go ahead. Yeah, I think as long as everything's ethical, consensual, like, it's not legal. Know that. What's the difference between ethical person, and, but. what is ethical? 
ethical? Great, I'm trying to wrap question. my head around. What's that? Great question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ethical means like doing the right thing, being respectful of the boundaries of everybody involved in this context, right? Mm-hmm. Um, making sure that consent is enthusiastic and given repeatedly throughout the experience. Um, if you're talking about a sex worker, again, it's not legal, so I'm not technically promoting that, but mm-hmm. if you're going to participate, making sure that, again, you're, you're going along with what you've agreed upon with that mm-hmm. sex worker and not surprising them or doing anything that involves non-consent mm. and making sure they're paid a fair wage. Oh, there are no sexual snake attacks. All right, mm. that's good. Is that can, right? Okay. Can I, doctor, this might be a question that I don't know if it's going to ring true for anybody else in here, but when I was single, when we're on the topic of this ethic, uh, the ethics of hooking up with girls, I had a big problem with not being able to execute a one night stand ethically. Not meaning that I, I did a donkey punch or I put an unsolicited finger up the ass. I, I felt like I was leading every chick into believing that I wanted a relationship mm-hmm. because I thought that was the only way to have a one night stand. Mm-hmm. So there was always this messy separation period with every girl that I'd hooked up with three or four times I where I feel like some and feelings might have been hurt. I would like to add on, on something to that. When I was in college and, you know, I was very sexually active, I um, would be very forward with, you know, what I wanted. Um, and it could come off as crass. And then later on when I was on The Bachelorette, you know, some of these girls on, on Twitter were very upset. They were like, he asked me for a blow job, And then, you know, I gave him one and he never talked to me again. Things like that. And I feel it's not I, I totally I, I do believe that that was wrong. So and I don't think that was but but uh, but would it have been better to pretend that I wanted to be in a relationship? And, you know, it's I don't know I don't what I'm asking. I, I know. know what you're asking. So how do you balance? Right. Being honest, right. which is all I want is a blow job. Mm-hmm. Are you OK with that? With being a little nicer, but not being so nice that you're making her think you want to get married somewhere down the road. Right. Well, here's the thing. Uh, There are a lot of women out there who are totally down for casual sex. Oh, yeah. And they don't necessarily want to be treated like an object or like you don't care about who they are as a human being. So I think there's a happy medium of being honest, which is necessary, by the way, for consent. If you're being deceptive, that's not a consenting situation. So you can't tell someone you're like a trap DJ to try to get... (laughs) To get a little parking lot action. I mean, I would argue that if that's the reason they're having sex for you, then that's not uh, ethical. Yeah. Mm. Ah, but also, um, who's who's going out there and having sex with trap DJs these days? That, anyway? that was the line a lot of that girls, the dating I'm sure. coach yeah. told King Croc to use to, yeah. to lie and say you were yeah. a trap oh, DJ. Oh, I forgot. Dude, it's been so long. I miss him. I, well, I'm a little bit more orthodox and feel mm-hmm. like you just really shouldn't lead with with any sort of deception because. That does take away someone's information and their ability to say yes in a way that is appropriate. So I am a big fan of, you know, trying to humanize someone and just be clear, like, hey, I'm looking for something casual. Here's what that might look like for me. Mm -hmm. Is that something you could be down for? And if not, move on. When do you spring the casual talk before or after sex? Well, I think it depends on how you've set it all up, right? Give us a healthy example. We'll say something universal. You're in your early 20s. You meet a girl at a bar. What is a healthy way to go from buying this woman a drink to going back to her place to having the let's keep this casual talk? What's a good order those things should unfold in? I mean, I I wish I could give you an answer that that is a one size fits all, but it's really Mm -hmm. not that easy because there are so many different factors that come into play with each unique pairing of humans, right? What their expectations are, what their hopes are, how they perceive the person's um you know, flirting or intriguing with them. So it, I think it's, you know, important to have that conversation early, but also I think there's room for spontaneous sex as long as everybody's consenting. I'm just saying, don't deceive someone intentionally. Mm-hmm. That's the part that I would really say. Intentionally. Stay or unintentionally. Try <laughs> not to. Well, no. But yeah. if you're doing your best, you shouldn't feel guilty about things maybe not working out perfectly. Like if, if some feelings are hurt, but you were trying your best to be a good guy... There is no try. There is only lie or don't lie. That's right. It's Yoda. I was <laughs> literally going, there is no try, only um, Okay, so how do you feel about the fact that the man sitting to your right, he, after he had sex with the groupie, he did he did put a heinous lie that he was dating her on his profile so that she would <laughs> get excited, and he, he went official with her, and, and he's, he's lying about it. The girl that left Instagram? Oh, she's back. <laughs> 
She left Instagram for a while. After that. Yeah, Tell us your thought on. process there, Swolby, and don't point any fingers. Yeah, this was all your decision. This was something that you decided you wanted to do. We had nothing to do with it, and I just thought it'd it? be hilarious just to leave it on because like we leave had the what pod, on, leave what on. So I wanted like continuity. Leave, you, you tell the story fresh. What did you leave on your profile? Uh, I said that we're in a relationship. You and the groupie girl you yeah. made love to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and. uh these DMs are wide the fuck open. No <laughs> condom squad, oh, winky God, face. But it was a joke. On Doctor, the I'm but sorry. We left it on the, I left it on my profile because I thought it would be genius so I can get other chicks to like slide in my DM. <laughs> and it actually worked, Doc. It, it, and by the way, your outfit looks crazy. Like the boots are looking, <laughs> looking good. Watch it. it is this a sexually ethical being? Again, I don't know the whole context, but mm-hmm. it sounds like non-consensual humiliation. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say that's exactly it was non-consensual humiliation. He I said she liked that. it. She thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. We, we Did talk she really, or was she maybe just trying to save some ego? Uh, she, Both. they're, she's a big fan. She probably thought yeah. it was funny. Okay, well. <laughs> I, I want to like you know, there is like a like a, a serious thing that I. While I have you here, yes, the doctor. In the same room, it's just something that I actually would like to talk to you about. Like, okay. ser- in all seriousness, other people might relate to it. I feel as though every relationship I've ever been in has failed because, like, talking before about you know, it's never enough. Like, I will, I'll be with someone. I'm like, oh, they're fucking beautiful. Like, I love that they're they're so amazing. But then it gets to a point where it's like, I'm bored. I need more like sex because like, you know, I had a fucking sex cult. And at the end of the day, it was like, this is terrible because there's all these people. It was an orgy hot. club. pretty much. It was like an orgy club and it just was growing and growing. And then until all COVID. surrounding Brooks, though, as the, the leader. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. All right. I, I could start any kind of cult I wanted if I put my heart <laughs> to it. But mm-hmm. what I am saying, though, is how can I gain like a, a, a like, how can I be satiated? How can I be with one person like or really just feel satisfied and not need to have more because that's my main issue is that like it'll get to a point where it's like i don't even like we can't just have sex i can't just be like yeah you're attractive but i want to go to sleep you know yeah. sort of situation like that's happened in every relationship i've been in like the most strikingly beautiful women like mm-hmm. that people would be like oh my god like you're fucking that chick and i'm like actually no i'm like turning netflix on and going to sleep you know like how can i find a way to not like to be interested until like satisfied. It's a great question. A great question. Think about where to start with that. So I think it's important to remember that when you first meet someone, like the primary neurochemicals in the brain are going to be those that are organized around a lot of excitement. It's dopaminergic. There's a lot of, you know, lust. It's new. There's adrenaline. It's all kinds of intensity. And as you get to know them more and more, in, that intensity will wane because you habituate to them, right? You see them every day. Mm-hmm. She's still beautiful, but she's not new anymore. You know more about her, and she knows more about you. So when we hit that stage of, of being with someone, different chemicals in the brain start releasing that promote more romantic bonding and love bonding. So we get more oxytocin, more of the things that really join people together. And that's important when we're talking about long-term trajectories, but it can be really frustrating when the lust part dies out because that's, I mean, it's hot, it's awesome, it's fun, right? Most of us want that part to stick around. Um, So what I think really works for couples is trying to um, reinvent novelty in their relationship, and that's a lot easier said than done. But distance and creating opportunities to get to know each other and reinvent yourselves together over and over again and explore each other. When you say distance, what does that mean, doctor? I'm sorry. Um, Well, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's been a whole pandemic going Mm -hmm. on. And so lots of people are just like living with their partner 24-7, working from home, Mm -hmm. living at home, parenting from home, doing all the things from home. And pretty soon you want to just look at your partner and go, because... They're way too familiar. You see them in every stage of, of their lives, your lives. It's a lot. Yeah. Right? Shitting in the same toilet. It's not cool. It's really, it's yeah. it's like the opposite of lust for a lot of people. Unless mm. coprophilia is your thing. And then yeah. you <laughs> it sure is Leo's. Yeah. Come on, it is. The the coffee thing. table tricks. Yeah. So <laughs> distance, right? Having um, intellectual distance, um, cognitive distance, emotional distance, individuation and separation physical proximal distance like 
space and is I'm, really important. I'm just curious, doctor, can you like break down some actionable steps a couple could take yeah. to make sure that that distance doesn't become closed? Yeah. So talking about their boundaries together is really important. Assessing your needs together and figuring out how much time do you spend with friends? Can you maybe spend some more time with your friends separately? Do you each have your own set of hobbies that really are enriching? Mm -hmm. Do you set intentional time together to hang out instead of just like amorphously hanging out whenever you're in the same room, right? Creating some, um, mm. you know, rituals around saying goodbye and coming back together and reuniting. That's really important. When we're in each other's space all the time, we stop doing that. We just start looking at our partner and they sort of blend into the wallpaper mm -hmm. after a while. And, and they're, so they, they're always like, what, what's wrong with me? Like, am I not good enough for you anymore? Like right. they have that sort of like, does it, does it always come back down to basically your own personal growth? I mean, is it yeah. partially like the more educated maybe, or the more you expand your horizons? I know mm -hmm. I've said that a lot today, but the, the easier it is maybe to be in a relationship. I think so. I think the more you invest in yourself, and I don't necessarily mean that in like a selfish, you know, I'm going to hurt other people to further myself kind of way. But, you know, when you invest in enriching your own life, when you invest mm -hmm. in your own growth, you remain really interesting, first of all, to yourself and to the people around you. So when you have two partners who are really invested in cultivating who they are as individuals, guess what? They've got a lot to learn about each other more. Right. And that is fun. That's hot mm -hmm. because, oh my God, I didn't even know that you were into doing that. Tell me more. Right? <laughs> Tell me about the sex cult. This is crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe, right? Maybe, if if yeah. you've got a partner who's all about compersion, yeah. And doctor, could you prescribe, I know you're a little reluctant to give these one size fits all solutions right. here, but what would you say is a benchmark healthy amount of days a couple should spend with each other per week? Yeah, I can't give you a one size fits all because it so depends on both of their attachment needs, um, their space, their resources, things like mm -hmm. that. But I think that's up for each couple to think about, talk about, negotiate together if there are differences, and then to reevaluate periodically because we're not static beings, right? We are always evolving, always changing. Our needs change, and so will our relationship. I do have one problem sexually myself. <laughs> you see, so I'll meet a girl on like, well, I got banned on Tinder for making jokes about fat chicks, but on mum on Bumble, rightfully so. Tell and, her what uh, you did. Tell uh, her what you did, so she can. Get, and she knows. I say, hey, exactly. I heard big bitches give good head. <laughs> That's not okay. You understand was, that? You understand I, maybe it's she not gave okay. great head. I said something very similar once, and oh, it came back to haunt me. Doctor, what, what, maybe I said what big you, girls. What do you think about that statement he made? That's just. Well, I think it's incredibly objectifying and mm -hmm. fat phobic and mm -hmm. speaks to insecurities from within. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I've texted blonde chicks. Hey, I heard blonde chicks give good head. And some of them are like, want to find out? Jesus. They yeah. play ball like that. <laughs> right? Objectifying Doctor. and, you know, you do you. But that's not my it problem. His eyebrows, it it. It. His eyebrows were so high. When he's, hey, hey, you want to find out? <laughs> you want to find out? <laughs> Uh, he did what we thought he was going to do. I looked over at you and I said, I wonder if it'll come back to where it's like no, some no. girl really let me wanted finish, me. Let me finish my right, point, right, Leo. Right. So he's got, I have this he's problem. Got a, I know what to say, but continue. <laughs> I have this problem where I'll meet a girl on Bumble and it'll just be this casual thing. Mm -hmm. But then, like, and then oh, we'll have God. sex, and she'll realize, wow, this guy's amazing. Oh, he's famous. He's uh, cock is fucking huge. No. And then they're in love with me. But it was all just this casual thing, and now I have this harem of girls that won't fucking leave me alone. It's true. And I don't like breaking hearts because they realize that they found the best, and that they're not gonna ever find anything better. They, and then when I leave and and vanish. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, their dreams are crushed, and I feel horrible about it. So now I just don't even have sex. You kick them out. We tell them a little bit of trailer. Danny, why don't wait, you, wait, yeah, wait, why don't wait, you wait, describe what, the, what his life is like, wait, Danny? Maybe let the doctor answer mm -hmm. first of all, based on that initial statement from Austin. Well, what was the question? Yeah, there was I just no heard question. A lot of how does he make like more uh, How does he make his dick smaller? No, and be less how can awesome? I? Yeah. How can I handle the fact that I'm so awesome that girls fall in love with me and I have to break their hearts, even if it starts out just casually? It's like they've been hit by Cupid's arrow, and then they won't fucking leave me alone. Well, Austin, it sounds like you don't really have, um, you know, a strong sense of your own autonomy. If you have to do this, what? Where's your power? Mm -hmm. Where are your boundaries? I, I just don't like breaking little pretty girls' hearts. That's what? all it is. It comes out of a place of love. Yeah. <laughs> I broke a lot of. I I had sex with a lesbian while she was in a relationship. 
I almost destroyed their relationship, and she almost went straight for a little while. See, doctor, at Austin, that's a problem. That's not healthy. I well, shouldn't it sounds be like acting like that. You could work with a therapist to, you know, negotiate that guilt a little bit differently. There we go. They the to, uh, there's just a lot of pressure to be, you know, um, I don't know, uh, ridiculous out there in order to get some views, in order to spread the good word. Like today, I think this has been a very helpful podcast for a lot of people, and I'm excited uh, to put it out there. But um. I, we were talking about incels earlier, and we really get, we really didn't bring it back around. Um, what what is what do you think is a, a way to combat this problem in the in the United States and the world? Are there any TV shows that might be good for? Them yeah, to like watch? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I I told. Okay, so I prescribed I prescribed to my patrons for them to watch Mad Men only because. <laughs> I think that the writer's room did a great job. What was of, the other show? Um, Peaky Blinders. They both have strong <laughs> alpha male type characters that are very confident and that and are they all seem womanizers. To have, uh, They're womanizers. Like they all have iPads for some for reason. For the, the incels. Anyway, um, so <laughs> so I prescribed Mad Men and and, uh, and Peaky Blinders as good shows to look at a guy that's an alpha. What Whatever. It was a douchey thing to do and say. It works for some. It's kind of actionable advice for, uh, for some. But what is what is what is a doctor's take on maybe prescribing something that would help someone that might be an insult? I mean, therapy. Therapy. Right? Mm. Therapy. But but really, I mean, we have to remember what is the core wound here? It's a lack of community. It's a lack of connection, and a feeling of inadequacy that that's never going to be available for them. So I think that you know people in the insult community. They're not necessarily, you know, like uh, horrible people. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that about anyone. They're people who lack skills socially, lack confidence, um, and have be have been so angry about their <coughs> lack of unmet relational and sexual needs mm -hmm. that they become so embittered and so entitled. And that entitlement actually keeps women away. Right? right? Women don't want to show up for that. So I think what they really would benefit from is building community that's not based on their sexual virility competition money any of that any of that stuff like really just sort of learning how to have friends getting out in the world that is going to take some of the sting out of the desperation mm -hmm. that they assign to sex right because mm -hmm. for so many men and you guys will tell me if this resonates for you mm -hmm. but sex is a way to get connection to get touch to get all of these tender parts that maybe aren't as accessible in your friendships with men. I mean, just watching all of you interact today, all you do is harass the shit out of each other. I know, it's wrong. Yeah, it's great. So, it's wrong. I'm I mean, sorry. It's, well, I, I understand that's how you've been codified to relate to each other, but that actually creates more distance for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in this room. I don't know. Whatever you guys do when I'm not here. Uh -huh. But I mean... <laughs> You know, there's there's a, a, a pan, there's an absolute um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a tragedy mm -hmm. the way that men are shamed away from intimacy. So I think that this community needs help. I think that they can look up to other men who they admire, but I would actually steer them away from the womanizers as role models. I know. Yeah. It's just it was for, it was a quick fix. It's a quick fix. Chat, for me, it's chat. like it's like some of these kids that might have this relationship. It's like. They don't understand that just the simplest thing, just going up and saying hello to the opposite sex. Yes. And that's that's all that, I, you know, you can if they stole a line that Don Draper uses and, and if I gave him more confidence to go up to a woman and that that was all I was looking for, you know, um, but yeah, I understand that, that maybe there's better role models than a, than a woman. If someone if someone came because I feel like a good one line that's always worked for me is uh like you go up and you're just like can i meet you real quick like if someone, <laughs> yeah, if yeah. someone said that if someone, brooks is coming on said, strong at someone, the end of the show someone wanted to say that, that, that you, was, know, you know what i like about that it's invitational mm -hmm. yes. oh, God. Uh, no, oh! she's anointing king croc and john oh, anthony no, no i think it, it's invitational but yeah. only if you will handle a no with mm -hmm. grace he also did something else. He was he was he was our, our he was an African American friend of ours, and he would go up to, to women often and say, Are, "Do you support Black Lives Matter or BLM?" And uh, they were white women usually, and they'd be like, "Of course." And then he'd be like, "Oh, can I get your number then?" That was one of his moves too. So I'm not sure I mean, that that one. Okay, well, yeah, whatever yeah, works. Doctor, so for him. so for, I'm sure they align politically. Wait, I just yeah. I just want to I just want to try to summarize, Doctor. Like, I just so I'm making sure that I'm understanding this correctly, and the audience is too. And I, I'm I'm not going to go for a joke here. You said that these 
incels or just, I don't want to use the word incels because I feel like it's super insulting. And I think everybody in this room has gone through periods where they have wanted to have sex and meet women and they weren't right. able to. Of course. And we weren't incels. We were just dudes who were in a strange part of our life. <laughs> it, 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 you said that building up other areas of your lives takes out the sting of rejection. So maybe instead of planning your day around going out and trying to get phone numbers, then going out to the bar and getting fucked up and chasing tail, maybe schedule time for a hobby, pick yes. up the cello, and then the bulk of the day spend working on a, your career, something you care about, not something like studying for the LSAT because you think law school is going to get you more pussy. Mm -hmm. get, build a richer life and women will find that attractive and yes. you will feel less mm -hmm pressure to go out and be this guy who gets fucking laid every time he goes drinking because you are confident in yourself and so it'll be easier in turn for you to talk to women that's yeah. a big yes. thing with incels they're like young guys for the most part who don't have a lot of money or resources or, or their right. own place of living so girls don't want to go to your mom's house when you're broke they want to go with the 26 year old guy who's older than you and has a car and a job and can fly them places and shit and then a lot of these guys just like they focus on that and it builds this like level of insecurity to where they just don't even try anymore but then eventually i've noticed because i've kept up with the incel community kind of for a while mm. they grow out of it once they start making enough money and then you know you mature Hopefully. a little bit and as long as they don't you know get like too depressed by the time they're 25, usually you'll be able to get laid not that hard. All right, thank you, Austin. That was a, a nice take on the situation. <laughs> Doc, you want to wrap it up, though? Yeah, I mean, to, to everybody's point, right? Mm -hmm. the, this is a community of men who are hurting, right? And I think that when we think about this community, we've got to think about how to give them scaffolding to a source of relief. And what you brought up earlier, Leo, and what you brought up just now, Danny, enriching your life is really... Um, it's a self-care mandate, right? We're all responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So creating dimensions in your life that really are exciting for you, that's going to make you a magnet for people that you yeah. want to date, right? If you don't like who you are, it's going to be really hard to go out there and showcase you know, all of your specialness to someone else because you don't even think you're special. Mm -hmm. So I would invite people to put down the entitlement, step into enrichment, yeah. and give it a shot for six months or a year and see how your life is different. Mm -hmm. And I think when people really take that on earnestly, they see tremendous strides, not only in their confidence, but in their relationships and in their sex lives. Because when you use the idea of sex as a way to shore up a sense of ego, guess what? It's illusory, mm -hmm. which means you're gonna have to keep getting a sexual experience to have any sort of confidence about yourself. So it's a full-hearted strategy that just Been is going there. to leave someone in the same space, mm -hmm. right? No matter their gender. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to create depth and richness mm -hmm. otherwise. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Leo and I have both been there when I was just a college kid and all I had was, oh, I'm a stud. I get chicks and I was miserable. Yeah. Same. I mean, I mean, that's kind of still where I'm at, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I am growing uh, slowly. Um, but thank you, thank you. I mean, I, I know we never talk about anything uh, regarding your personal life or anything. But but how are you, and what are you doing out there, and and um, you know, what's going on in your life? I mean, what do you want to know? Just about. I mean, I guess. I mean, we can keep it about we gotta, your we profession gotta, if that's okay. I mean, yeah, we get a wrap up. Yeah, we get a wrap up. This is the, this up? is it, pretty oh, much. This is the this is where I get to plug. Yeah, you can plug oh, exactly. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever you want. Yeah. So, I mean, my my group practice is doing really well. Thank you. Um, we are located in California, Colorado, Illinois, Florida, and New York. Wow. Yeah, I've been really expansive wow. this yeah. last couple of years. Um, so for people who are looking for therapy around sex, mental health, and relationships, they can look at modernintimacy.com. Mm -hmm. They can check out uh, my, my Instagram and TikTok, Dr. Kate Balistrieri. And if there are any um, women-identified folks listening, I have a class or a workshop, rather, that I'm hosting in a couple weeks on the 29th that is all about uh, humanizing. It's called Humanize My Holes. Mm -hmm. It's all about helping women develop a really healthy and um, empowered relationship with sex. Holes with uh, L? Yes. What? Okay. There's an L in holes. Yeah. Holy sure. We're, uh, we're having a seminar called oh. Dehumanize Brooks's Holes pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be... Um, that's great and I uh, seriously appreciate your time it's always um, breath of fresh air and thank you good. so much for coming good. on yeah. It, yeah. it started very silly and yeah. then it ends on a sweet note sweet on a note. very sweet note yeah. well mm -hmm. thanks for the invitation mm -hmm. and of course. 
for trying to create some ripples of good in the world. Absolutely. And we can't wait uh, another, I think it has been a year since we've had it's you been on. a minute, yeah. Yeah, they're, you're a fan favorite. I think that last episode has over 100,000 views. We, wow. we, def, we would love to have you back on, uh, you know, obviously on a regular basis. So thank mm -hmm. you yeah. very much. Happy to. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Dr. Kate, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs>